phone. This is Animal Uncontrol. Welcome to the voice chat. These calls are recorded for uploading to social media. And by joining a call, you are consenting to being recorded. Anyone wishing to join a call or the Animal Uncontrolled Discord should email me at animaluncontrol at gmail.com and I will reply with instructions. Today's topics, Nutter Interactions, Dog, dog Nut Intelligence Level Follow-Up, and Dogs and Dating. Sonia is back. Welcome. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> Um, you uh, mentioned earlier you had an interaction with a dog person at in a dog free area. Why don't you explain that? Maybe I maybe I, I got the scenario wrong. No, you're absolutely right. Okay, so to set the stage, where I live again, town unnamed, but we have a lot of um, we have when some areas that are well, there's areas that are what that are that are wildlife closure areas and this was not one of those areas there's seasonal wildlife restrictions that are, don't allow dogs but scoff laws are always going up there with their dogs even though of course they're not they allowed are. right this this place was actually a it's it's a nature preserve and it's along a river and there is a there's a big gate there that has a large sign with a dog and a circle slash through it along with motorcycles or bikes right it's a it, you, you, it just says very clearly on there. It doesn't say no dogs. It has a dog circle slash. And then there's a little like a sign right as you're going into this thing. And in order to enter it, it's one of these gated kind of, it's really hard to explain. I should have taken a picture of it, but it's this weird, it's a sort of interesting gate that is almost V-shaped. So you have to swing, you go through one person at a time and you kind of swing the gate open to half of it and you squeeze around the gate and then close it to go through the second half. It makes it really difficult to get a dog through there. Let's just put it that way. Right. And the sign at the sign at the side of this says, you know, it says, you know, uh, nature preserve, no, no bikes, no dogs, not dogs on leashes, no dogs and protect the wildlife, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, um, I go in there, I was walking along the trail and I go in there, I walk, you know, whatever, I don't know, a third of a mile. And I just, I haven't seen any birds or anything. So I turn around and come back and I'm walking along this dirt trail. And what do I see? Some dude with a German shepherd on a leash in the nature preserve coming towards me. And I just walk, and you know, this stuff, I mean, maybe it's my problem that I get to really, this stuff really pisses me off to probably an inordinate degree, but it really does make me mad when people don't follow rules. Right. So I see him coming towards me and I'm like, I just put my hands out. I'm like, dude, really? And he's, he's like looking at me like what? And I'm like, dogs, you're not supposed to have a dog in here. There are no dogs allowed in here. And he just is like, well, he's, he's on a leash. And I'm like, so I'm what? <laughs> yeah, gosh, you know, and so I turn off my, you know, I, I was listening to a podcast. I turn it off and I, and I just started to like, what? I, I just, I basically got up, kind of up in his face and I, I kind of raised my voice and I was like, did, did you not see the sign back there that said no dogs allowed in here? I said, come on, really? I mean, why do you think you're above the rules? Why do you, can you please explain to me why you think the rules don't apply to you? And he was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, you know, um, I don't, whoa, let's just relax, calm down. And then I was like, and then I just was like, Jesus, you know, ah, cussing. And he's like, hey, listen, you know, don't like, there's no need to, for you to react like that. I'm not going to interact with you if you're going to like get. Oh, you know what, so though? It's like, fuck him. He's the one breaking the rules. That It's <sighs> criminal, right? It, it is. <laughs> it is. It just was like, and I was just like, I just said, and he goes, why are you so upset? And I go, you know what? I said, because I'm sick and tired of people, dog owners breaking the rules and acting like the rules don't apply to them. I said, this is a dog free area. And I, and um, I said, it does, it does piss me off. I said, you have trails everywhere. You have a dog park that you can take your fucking dog to. And when I said fucking, he was like, ah, you know, and then he's just like, okay, calm down. And then he stopped and he's, and I, cause I was leaving. He goes, are you heading out? Uh, he goes, well, I didn't know that about the wildlife thing. And, I was like, okay. Yeah, like right. Yeah, you gotta walk, walk right past a huge no dogs sign. You know? <laughs> I know, right? So, anyways, we turned around and I said, and another thing too, I, I said, I've been bitten by German shepherds before, and so I'm really not keen on them. And he's like, Oh, you know, and this dog by 
I, you know, it was pretty mellow. He had it on a leash and stuff. And it was not, in, thank God it wasn't interested in sniffing me or anything. It's like, you know, that, that just like completely. Anyways, he turns around and he leaves. He walks out. He goes, well, walk with me. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. And I said, okay. And then I call, I calm down, you know, cause I mean, like I said, I'm not normally like this, but I just get, I get pissed when I see people beat. Just, no, I, I do too. You know, and that's actually one, one reason I don't engage them because or often because, uh, you know, afraid of what it might escalate into. Um, but sort of an interesting tactic he took. Oh, yeah, let's talk. There's nothing to talk about. Get your shit mud out of here now. Okay. I know. Conversation over. Like, he's like, oh, but you can see he's trying to, he's trying to be, well, I'm the calm, reasonable one. Yeah, the calm, reasonable one. It needs to get their crap hound out of here. Right. I know. And just because the dog's on a leash, it's like the dog can still terrorize wildlife. It's going to piss and crap all over the place. It's going to bark and ruin the acoustic environment. Yeah, exactly. just because, I mean, having it on a leash is a little bit less bad. You know, it's like littering. It's kind of like the idiots that bag the dog crap, but then leave the bag there. Like, oh, exactly. yeah, I bag my crap. It's like, exactly. yeah, you're, still, you're still littering. You still left it there. You know? Exactly. <laughs> I know. So, I mean, I'm telling him. I'm said he goes why are you so upset you seem like a really angry person I said no actually what makes me angry is I came in here to experience like this is a wildlife preserve I came in here to see if there's any what you know what birds are coming in what migratory birds are coming and going etc and I said you know dogs come in here and you know I said they they chase they'll chase the wildlife they scare ducks away um, I said they come in, their poo is, you know, their crap is full of parasites and bacteria, et cetera. And I said, cause he's walking out. He go, I said, did you not see the sign? He goes, this is what he said to me. He said, I saw the sign that had a dog with a, you know, a circle slash. He goes, so I thought I would just keep my dog on a leash. That's what he thought. He thought that that just was, it was okay. I mean, like seriously. Okay. So anyways, we walk out and we come out again, have to negotiate out of this, this like complex little gate thing um, to, to, to get out of there. And it takes him a long time to get his, I mean, it takes him a little, actually a little while to get his, get his dog out of there because it's a, it's a long dog and to bend around this like sharp, like, you know, 45 degree turn around this gate thing. Anyways, we get out there and I point at it and I said, here's the sign. I said, you see where it says no dogs allowed. I said, it doesn't matter whether they're on a leash or not. I said, dogs scare off wildlife. I said, wildlife, wildlife see dogs, they smell dogs. And I said, I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, but dogs can actually cause enough stress in pregnant animals to cause them to um, lose their babies, to abort their babies. And I said, they just, they're a predator. And I said, um, do you, I mean, thinking, dude, you know, I just don't, I don't understand how he did. He didn't see that sign, but he somehow interpreted that the circle slash just meant he could go in there with no leash on. And he was very, he actually, to his credit, again, he deescalated the situation because I was like, I was like so pissed. And he goes, you know what? He goes, I did not understand that about the wildlife. He goes, I did not understand that. He goes, thank you. He goes, thank you for telling me. And I said, okay, now, you know, and I, I mean, this guy's been hiking and stuff, and I don't know if he was just being, if he was just trying to be the nice guy or whether he was, he was really, truly ignorant of it or what. I don't know. Um, one thing I wanted to, one thing that this scenario, this, this whole situation, anyways, we ended up walking for a ways back to his car. And in the interim, he, he was telling me, about his dog, about his dog. Like he t told me the dog's name, like, I don't fucking care what your dog's name is and stuff. And why, do you know why German shepherds are a good breed of dog, what the qualities are? And I was like, I'm thinking, well, you know, see, they're police dogs and they like to intimidate mall people. But I yeah, did that. you see what I have up on the screen right now? I, I, oh, I, yes, I, I saw that. Yes. Yeah. Our, our band pit bulls put up, if you look at this one, this is what they put up. Yes. Basically that like every dog is a perfect fur angel sent from heaven, except for pit bulls. But I, so I tuned it up for him. It's like, yeah, what I put on the German shepherd used by yes. police to violate civil rights should be banned. <laughs> And exactly. I mean, this guy's telling me, oh, he's four years old and blah, 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 and stuff. I don't, stuff I don't really, really care about. I was just sort of just tuning him out. We, but we were talking about this sorts of things. And I said, 
we finally get to a place where his car is parked and he would have actually kept walking with me because, again, I mean, the guy was actually pretty nice and very considerate and stuff like that. And I think, again, I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know how you could live. I asked him how long he'd lived in there, and he says since 1996. And I'm like, are you? But you're just not aware that. Oh, he knows. You're not aware of this. He's I'm just thinking, being. My, my take is he's just being passive aggressive. And he's like, oh, you know, no dogs allowed. He knows, but what he also knows is really nothing's going to happen to him. It's like, okay, maybe some crazy dog hater might yell at me, but there's really no. He's like, when well, if that happens, I'll just, you know talk my way out of it. And he'll probably be back there with his dog at some point. You know, he doesn't care. Maybe. That's my take on it. No, he's just being passive aggressive. I don't give these people the benefit of the doubt. Again, if you talk about like the, you know, pit bull people, it's it's kind of like, they, oh. they know they know oh. what they're doing. They know their dog can, you know, rip people to shreds, but they that's why they get them. You know, it's a project intimidation. It's the same thing with these people, you know, the dog off leash. But it's an interesting take because, yeah, he didn't turn into a rage monster, but he was, yeah, passive aggressive about it. That's my take on it. You know, it's interesting because he seemed genuinely, I mean, he was either good at faking it or he seemed genuinely, I mean, interested because I, when I, he did turn around and walk out with me after all, he didn't just go fuck you and keep walking his dog in there. And he, I mean, again, I don't know how you could be on this planet and not understand the, the, the impact of dogs. In fact, I even said, you know, when you let your dog run around off leash and it chases wildlife, I said, is that cool? He goes, I go, do you stop your dog from chasing off wildlife? He goes, oh, well, dog's going to do what they're going to do. And I said, up, full stop. No. I said, yeah. I don't know if you're aware of this, sir, but I said, in this state, a peace officer who find, who witnesses your dog chasing, harassing, um, molesting wildlife is free to shoot your dog. That is a law that they can do that, and you can be fined $200. I don't think you liked hearing that, but I'm just like, well, this is a fact. And I said, honestly, think about it. How would you – why – why do you think that wildlife should exist to in to to for your dog's enrichment experience? Why do you think it's cool to have your dog chase wildlife? Why do you think that's cool? I said, do you really? I, how is that cool? And, I, and again, I, I, he didn't have an answer when I asked him. Why do you think you're above the rules? Why do you think the laws <laughs> and the rules don't apply to you? There well, is no answer to that. And so I put him on the spot. And one thing I was going to mention: the reason why this was an experience for me is because once he. Once I kind of calmed down a little bit and I said, okay, are you familiar with uh, the heuristic known as Hanlon's razor? Yeah, I, I'm familiar with, I'm trying to think of, is that, I don't want to mix, mix it up with Occam's razor, but isn't Hanlon's razor where don't attribute to evil what can be attributed to stupidity? stupidity exactly. It's, um, it's yeah. a heuristic of telling us to never attribute to malice what is adequately explained as stupidity. Yeah. So in this instance, I thought about that and I thought, okay, I, sh you know what, I'm not really sure how somebody who is a, and this guy was probably a couple years older than me. I'm not really sure how you could look at a an image, um, you know, a, a, a picture, uh, you know, basically a pictograph of a dog with a circle slash through it and think somehow, wow, OK, that means I'll just keep my dog on a leash. And I'm trying to, like, put myself in the shoes of this guy and just see this guy just sees everything through the eyes of a dog world, right? Like, yeah. oh, well, dogs are automatically welcome everywhere. So that just means I'll just bring my dog in here, but on a leash. It means I can't let it run around off a leash. And I'm just thinking, okay, is this, I'm trying, you know, again, I'm trying to have a tiny bit of empathy. It's extremely hard, okay, right? But I'm trying to put this in a perspective where I'm learning from and thinking, if this is the mentality of more dog owners, I might be able to get them have more more of a positive effect to get them to change their behavior by being not hostile to them, which again, and this works for everything under the sun, you know, trying to get people out of cults and all that sort of stuff. And so I just thought, okay, the next time this happens, I'll try to not escalate. I will just come up to them and say, excuse me, did you not see the sign? Dogs are not allowed here. And if they try to you know, tell me other ways to say, no, there's the sign isn't, it doesn't say dogs on leash, it says no dogs allowed. I said, explain to me why you think the rules don't apply to you. I'm interested to hear it. And yeah. calmly say that and see what they say. And then say, okay, well, you know what? Um, if you're going to ignore the rules and think that they don't apply to you, I'm just going to, I'm going to call animal control. 
and I'm going to, you go walk around the park here and I'm going to call animal control and they will cite you when you come back, when you're, they'll be waiting for you at your car. When you come back to cite you for this violation, yeah. because you are violating, you're breaking a rule. And yeah, uh, that's be, how I'm going to start handling this. That's the other thing too, is you know, the penalty is very, very weak though, like two hundred dollars. I don't know if you were on, but I posted in the Discord recently because maybe we were talking about this. And actually I had something else to, to share on this topic. But um <clears throat> there I was on a, a public pier in the St. Pete Beach area a while back, maybe a year or two ago. The place I like to hang out at, at least when I'm in that part of Florida. And there's a sign, not really a big sign, that said, you know, feeding dolphins, you know, as a federal. Oh, offense. yes. And it said, it said it was a hundred. Get this. That was insane. Okay? Feeding a dolphin is a hundred thousand dollar fine. That and I was insane. like, oh, but that's the thing is like a lot of those wildlife violations are typically very expensive like poaching yes um, or or harassing wildlife but so it's sort of like okay but you let your dog off leash to harass wildlife it's only 200 bucks but it goes good that emphasizes a point i um, i always make is that it's another one a big double standard that pro really protects them there's very little protection from these things but there's yeah. a lot of protection for them. And that's, you know, part of it. It's that he probably figures, you know, he'll keep doing it. Okay. Worst case, he gets cited 200 bucks. But it's like, that's that's the problem with like dog, with a lot of this is even when the laws are enforced, the penalties are very, very weak. So my, I guess it was good he didn't turn into a rage monster and try to stab you to death or anything but he still try it strikes me as a first class like passive aggressive jerk it's like really hmm why is this upsetting you what are you like what are you like so over something? it's like tell tell me about your mother um <laughs> 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 Why are you so filled? Oh, that goes back to, um, yeah, I wanted to segue to, as I wanted to, that's, that's a good story though, but that's a thing to watch. I got probably what I would have said to him was like, look, whether I'm pissed off, I, I'm not the, the problem you are for bringing yeah. your dog to a dog free area, whether what, how I feel about it doesn't really matter that much. Cause it's, it, you know, they always try to put it off onto somebody else. The problem isn't that he's breaking the rules. The problem is that you're pissed off about it. That's the, see, nothing's ever their fault. Ever. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's always somebody else. It's like, yeah, you know, so any, in any case, um, but that sort of segues into your talk. We were talking about the um, last time we we're talking about the intelligence and maturity level of some of these people. Yeah. Um, and actually, that guy he sounds like he's probably well practiced. Like he he's probably smarter than average, particularly for a dog person. And he's probably thought through or had these kind of confrontations before. And that's what he does is he puts the you know just well I won't you know, pull a rage monster. I'll, you know, I'll, but I'll still push it off on other people. Hmm. Tell me, why does this make you so upset? Were, were you bullied in school by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> I did tell him though. I said, dude, <laughs> dogs are everywhere. I said, you have dog parks, you have all these other places. I said, the one place that says no dogs and you wonder why I'm pissed off because I can't come in here and get away from them. Yeah. I said, my God, come on, everywhere. This is a dog crazy town. That's what I told yeah. him. I'm sure he knows. You know, I mean, he, he played it pretty well, though. I mean, definitely above average for that ill. For but sure. I, I don't I don't give them the benefit of the doubt. It's like they know or at least should know. But um, but usually the kind of talk about that. This there was this exchange because last week we were talking about. Well, you know, we picked on service dogs for a while and also the intelligence and maturity level of dog people. And <clears throat> let me just check something else real quick. Oh, did we get somebody else in here? Is Sheepy on? Sheepy, you there? You're on mute, Sheepy. Earth to Sheepy. Oh, there you are. Are you there? 
Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. What's hey, up? Hey, welcome, Sheepy. Hey, what's up? I was just <laughs> listening. I missed the beginning of the story, but that's uh, all right. Well, you can <laughs> you can uh, rewind and listen to it later. So, actually, I wanted to talk to you too. Would you feel comfortable talking about? We're talking about nutter interactions but something really odd happened with your neighbor you said the other day <laughs> did you want to discuss that if you don't that's fine we can just move on to the, the next topic yeah it's kind of a short story and i don't have any more details but um essentially i was driving home from dropping the kids off this is like in the morning i think uh, so it was kind of early in the day, and um, I see from a distance, I'm driving up the road towards my house, and I see her, my nutter neighbor's dogs loose in the in her front yard, which is becoming an increasingly normal sight. Like, she's lets them out running around loose more frequently, <laughs> and uh, it's always the um, pit bulls and Great Danes. That she's, I think that she stores in her garage. <laughs> stores in her garage. <laughs> stores in there. And uh, the, she drives like a Mustang, and her trunk was open. And so I get, I'm getting closer, and then I see like the passenger or the driver's side door is open as well, and the dogs are just kind of circling around the car. And then I get up, kind of like behind the car, and she is laying face down. <laughs> like motionless on her driveway, which I will remind you is very often covered in dog shit as she hoses oh, it out of the garage. And I slam on my brakes because I think that she's dead. Like oh, I was like, it has finally happened. She has been mauled to death by these dogs. <laughs> and I'm coming upon the scene of her like you know murder or whatever yeah and so i come to like a stop like fast like i slam on my brakes and it's like a gravel dirt road so i know she hears my car like skidding behind her and suddenly she like pops her head up and like lifts a leg and kind of like turns around and i'm like okay she's still alive <laughs> so i just so i just continue on and like pull up into my driveway and it was just the most bizarre i'm like what are you doing <laughs> Yeah, well, did you, you probably what did you did you call anybody? I mean, no, um, no. Yeah, I mean, I you don't want to you don't want to get out of the car. Probably what I would have done was I would have called nine one one and said I think somebody passed out, and no, I'm not getting out to help them because there's like murder mutts like circulating everywhere. So not, oh yeah, no, you know, yeah. yeah, if you'd gotten out of the car to help her and those dogs had attacked you, it would have been a hundred percent your fault, according to Oh, for sure. Dogs. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, I was yeah. not going to get out no matter what. Like yeah. they, they were still actively attacked. There's no way I first of all, this is the consequences of your own actions. Like I'm not getting my arms ripped off for you. Yep. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah. if she hadn't moved, I was going to like call nine one one, obviously. But yeah, no way. I'm getting out and checking on her. Like oh, yeah. that's you're you're gonna have to wait until. And even you'll see like stories like this, like the Jacqueline Duran. Oh the yeah. He showed up. Ash, they waited out. They were outside for like half an hour. Yep. Because it was not safe alarmed. for them to even go in. Yeah, that that was just in talk about like um, incompetent. Well, just yeah, basically, uh, you yeah, had negligent <clears throat> authorities. Yes. yes. That uh, what was going on with that? They're like, well, I mean, you know what, too, is they if somebody's being, you know, in the process of being like mutilated. Yeah, that's probable cause. They can they can go in for that. Right. They don't well, they don't need permission from the owner to go in there. If there's a I guess part of the problem is, you know, is a dog mauling a crime. I mean, I, I, unfortunately, like many people don't think that it is. I think that it is. But, you know. oh, absolutely. But yeah, I that was the impression there. they didn't enter because the dogs were so aggressive, like behaving so aggressively. I don't know. I mean, like, no, that's exactly what I thought that when I read the stories, it basically sounded like the cops were like, oh, these things are going, they're out of control and they're dangerous. And they were too squeamish to just go in there and just cap them. Right. Yeah. Which is yeah. What they should. yeah, they should have. I don't know exactly why, but like, it's kind of. I don't know. Dog owners have these dangerous dogs that attack them. And then they're like mad that no one's intervening and stuff. And it's like, well, you want the cops to get their arms ripped off or. Yeah. I don't know. Or, I mean, it's not easy to hit like a moving animal yeah. with like a handgun. 
Yeah, or you even know what I'm trouble saying? also because there's, I mean, right now there's the nutters are agitating to, you know, prevent, well, not just cops, but any armed person from shooting dogs. It's like, well, they need more training how to deal with dogs. It's like, no, they probably need to shoot more often, probably. Yeah. You know, <laughs> because, yeah, in that case, yeah, they should have gone in and shot those dogs. But I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what the exact. I'm not that I'm trying to defend the police in that case. Not at all, but I don't know what the exact protocol is in, in a case like that, or if there even is one. You know, maybe they just didn't didn't know what to do. Um, right. There, there should be. There should be. You know what? If a dog is attacking a person, lethal force is justified. Period. And I can't even. I was going to say I can't even believe that that would be a second. I mean, think about it. If it were a coyote, if it were any other animal, if it was a human that was doing that to another human, they would be, the cops would have no oh, hesitation oh, oh, whatsoever great. in shooting them. But somehow yeah. a dog is different. Like you don't, you're squeamish and you hesitate. No, if you see a dog mauling a child or a, a, another per, a person, you shoot it. Yeah. I, that's just like, it seems like common sense. It doesn't matter what kind of animal it is. Just you shoot think, it. But even to, like earlier today on my local Facebook page, there was a woman with five young children. Like I went to her profile to look. She was talking about, she posted a picture and it was basically like, does anyone recognize this dog? Can someone please come get it? It's been staying at my house like for a few days now. Like it slept here last night. And basically I have been, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> my, me and my children are like uh, stuck in the house because every time we try to go outside, this dog is growling at us. It charged and almost bit one of my children. Oh my God. And can someone please come help, come get this dog? And all the comments are, and, and then she went on to say like, I don't want it to get hurt. Like the dog. <laughs> Jeez, more well, like the comments were all yeah, like, people, why aren't you just shooting the dog? Like, there were yeah, several triple S comments. People, people are way too, that's the thing, is it's, you know, the zeitgeist, the Overton window needs to shift more. Even though I think it is starting to drift in, a, in the right direction, it needs to shift more because people are way too sympathetic towards these things. It's way crazy. too much. That was the thing, and I, I brought this case up a few times. There was, there was a pack of three pit bulls that was terrorizing my neighborhood for about six months. And finally, actually, the, the long story sure was actually they wound up getting put down because they finally they they had a court hearing. The judge ordered the owner to do a whole slew of things. None of the stipulations were met. So the dogs were actually impounded and put down. Of course, they probably just went out and got more pit bulls, but but whatever. But what was interesting about that was a whole the whole ball got rolling. It was a woman whose cat was killed. The dogs killed her cat on right on her back porch. Right? Oh yes, yes. And so, so this is so she started. This was on next door, right? And this whole huge comment thread kicked off, and it was a kind of thing. Yeah, the dogs attacked a couple on bicycles. They killed other pets. They're constantly at large, you know, invading properties like knocking over trash cans and spreading trash everywhere and damaging property. And it went, and there was dozens and dozens of complaints. So this other woman said, cause she's like, I, my kids can't play outside now, right? We're basically we're under house arrest. So she said, you know what? I'm going to, I, I'm, I have a gun. I'm going to get my rifle out. And if I see them, blam them, take them, I'm going to shoot them dead. Right. And of course, other folks wrote in and said, well, you might be careful with that because you might get jacked up on an animal cruelty charge. Not saying that shooting the dogs would be wrong. It's just that there might be consequences. But who comes out? It was the OP, the original poster. He, says, he goes, no, no, please, no. They're innocent. It's not their fault. And it's like, lady, you know, people like that are part of the problem. It's like, no, stop defending. It's one thing to say, yeah, okay, I don't want the neighborhood turned into a shooting gallery, but right. don't don't defend the animals. Yeah, okay, they're not moral actors, but so what? They're terrorizing the neighborhood. Authorities aren't doing anything. And I think, yeah, le particularly if they attack something, lethal force is justified. But yeah, that's that's part of the problem. So yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. 
Um, People need to get out of the brainwash. They need to just be disabused of the notion that dogs are somehow, like it's just that cultural brainwashing that happens, that dogs are somehow special and innocent, like you said, and that they are nothing but animals. They're no different than any other wild animal that's attacking, and they should be dealt with accordingly. I mean, no other animal is accorded the sort of leniency that dogs are. And yeah. It's just, do you do you see what insane. I have up on the screen now? Because it kind of segues yeah. from your story earlier about the man. Well, he the dog wasn't off leash, but bringing his dog to a wildlife area. And I thought this was an interesting case. This was within the past week or so. As there was a bear attack in Pennsylvania, and this woman was attacked. And it, it's very rare for a bear to just run up to somebody and attack them. Typically. You know, bear attacks involve someone, you know, breaking the law or not following best practices. Um, but this is interesting. She says, because what happened was a woman let her dog out, I guess, to do its to do to go potties. And um, the bear attacked. It was a mother bear with three cubs. And it goes, mama bears are very, very protective. That's why if you ever see a baby bear, you want a GTFO ASAP because exactly. that's, you know, that's like, forget it. They look cute, but you don't want to be anywhere near them. And the mama bear won't attack you unless she thinks you're threatening her young. But in any case, police chief John Hayes told the Butler Eagle he believes there was some kind of interaction between the bears and Galante's dog, which was a Pomeranian. So it was a mini mutt. Oh, named Smokey, which was uninjured. And I think this this happens even in Florida. There have been more and more, you know, bad interactions with humans and bears. And it seems that many of them involve a dog. And I think what happens, yeah, the dog starts harassing the bear. And the bear says, you know what? I'm just not in the mood today, Fido. And but then so the, the, there's an altercation between the dog and the bear. The owner tries to save the dog. That's what we talked about one of these on one of these other calls, you know, the whole brood parasite thing. And then the human is injured by the bear. But the whole the whole incident was instigated by the dog's behavior, by its mindless aggression. So, but that's, a, you know, another good reason, at least, you know, not let your dog off leash in these places because, you know, that can trigger one of these incidents. Um, but, yeah. Yep. Um, that, so, anyway. Oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. I just wanted to interject really quickly. That happens all the time. I yep. mean, in fact, um, on the same trail I was telling you about, not in the, not in the, um, the nature preserve, but uh, an, uh, an acquaintance of mine who's a, who's a knitter, she was telling me that, you know, after her mom died, she uh, acquired her mom's small dog and she was walking. And this is, a, this is an, urban, an urban trail system, right? I mean, deer are everywhere along this. I, I've encountered them several times. They just come down off the hills. I mean, it's like, this is just, I mean, they, can, they know they're safe, they're in the neighbor. I mean, I've seen eating apples in, in her yard and two, I mean, they come all over the place. Anyways, and this is in the middle, this is in, downtown of where I live sometimes, you know, just in the area. They just are, they're all over. Anyway, she was walking her dog, her mom's dog, on a leash on this trail. And there was a deer and the deer actually went after her dog and attacked it. Now, <laughs> you know, this is exactly what happens. All animals hate dogs. I yeah. mean, seriously, it triggers it, these people that have dogs and bring them into areas, uh, you know, where they're wildlife, especially large ungulates, they're, they're targeting themselves or making themselves a target for these animals to come and attack their dog and maybe kill it, or then they could get injured in the process. And that's exactly what happened. This woman's in this situation, I bet you, I would bet anything that that bear was just, it was not doing, of course it wasn't doing anything wrong. It sees the bear or the, excuse me, it sees the dog as a threat. It is yeah. a threat. It smells like a, it smells like a predator. It looks like a predator. The bear is. I mean, all moms are going to protect their babies, and a female deer, a, a mom deer with her fawn, they will go. I mean, I've seen. There's videos of just them going co completely nuts on dogs, yeah. and the dog wasn't even doing anything. It was just existing. But the de the deer doesn't care, and that happens all the time. I mean, think about those. You know, those um, instances. I'm, I don't know if we mentioned them or not, but I mean, they've certainly been brought up elsewhere about those uh 
mountain lions, I'm sorry, uh, mountain goats, where people, two people's mutts died because they brought, I think it was in, no, oh, I don't know if it was like Oregon or Washington in some park. Some, I think it was, a, a, maybe, a, I don't know if it's a national park, maybe it was Utah or something. Anyway, people brought, insisted on bringing their dogs up around where there's mountain goats. And mountain goats um, are large and they are, I mean, they can damage, they can kill humans if they wanted to. Um, I already told you guys about my experience with Jerry and, you know, he was non-threatening to me cause I wasn't around. I didn't have a dog. I mean, I, I wasn't trying to approach him and acting aggressively towards him, but these dogs got killed by the mountain goats. One of them got like gored and I think tossed off of a cliff and killed. These people insist on bringing their dogs around in these environments where the dogs per usually aren't even legally allowed to be. But even yeah. if they were, they're supposed to be on a leash. The dog was off a leash. And then something bad happens. And then the wildlife frequently gets blamed. I'm like, no, no, the dog owner is 100% responsible for their dumb dog. And if you let it off the leash, it's an F, you know, F-A-F-O situation. Yeah. No yeah. sympathy for these people. Yeah, I, I wonder too, I had a thought, and again, it's just a thesis, but you talk about the, the, the situation where the deer just flat out attacked the dog. It was very unusual for a deer to do, but you wonder if that animal specifically had had bad encounters with dogs in the past. For example, say a dog killing its young, for yep. example. I mean, like I said, all of us get here with very personal reasons for being here. That may apply to non-humans also. <laughs> you know? Exactly. I mean, it's just, it's just an idea I had, but that um, that that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, yeah. Every everything hates dogs, right? Because it's they're just like IHD says they're just they're deranged mutants. They really are. And they're intrusive. <laughs> they just intrude on on everyone on every living things. You know, like well being and personal space and quiet and you know all of this. Their habit, their territory, their habitat, everything, and it's disruptive and yeah, I even told the guy, the one, you know, the guy on the, the that I had the interaction with, I said, listen, I said, off-leash dogs are the bane of everyone's existence. Yeah. That includes, you know, hikers, runners, cyclists, other dog owners who leash their dogs, all wildlife. I said, nobody, there is nobody out there that likes off-leash dogs. But yet they're just, yeah. they're like a, you know, they're, they're like a plague. Yeah. <laughs> There was a, actually there was a post on uh, actually it was a man Pitbull's Reddit where a rock climber was being belayed, you know, so there, there was a rope strung up. He was hanging right while he was climbing and the belayer was working the rope at the base and this pit bull tried to attack the belayer. Now, the pit bull <laughs> fortunately had a, a muzzle on. But it, so essentially tackled the guy, but that could create a lethal situation. Absolutely. Um, because again, the pit bull was running off leash. It was interesting, it was on our band pit bulls, but it goes back to it's like, yeah, any if a golden retriever had done that, you, you know, could have had the same outcome. If it knocks the guy over the belayer, then yeah, that could kill the cause the death of the climber. Because if, if it were a golden retriever, they'd say, well, is it the dog being a dog? He just wanted to be friendly, right? But yeah, off leash dogs are a disaster. You know, and that's the problems I had with my, you know, uh trail organization. Yes. And interestingly, you know, that whole story was um, you know, I mean, the dog was injured. Um I mean, I assumed it ran face first into a palmetto. I didn't see the injury as it occurred. But even yeah, even if all you care about is the well-being of the dog, it's still a terrible idea. But yet they keep doing it. And not only that, but they reserve the right. They claim the right to do it. Yeah. It boggles my mind because really, <laughs> it's like your dude. I mean, people... It's your responsibility to protect your dog. It's too stupid, as we know, to understand threats to itself. You know, whether it's a yep. snake bite or getting, you know, raked across the face by a, a mountain lion or mauled to death by a bear. And yet yeah. here you go and you just think, oh, my dog needs to have an enrichment experience out in with wildlife. And, you know, and then it gets a face full of porcupine quills and then has and dies you know i mean <laughs> whose fault is that you know it's like well you know it's like you don't let your toddler walk out in the middle of the street so yeah. you don't let your dog run around off leash it's too stupid to know how to protect itself i mean you yeah. need to that's that's what being a, 
again, we talk about the contradiction in terms and how it's a mutually exclusive term, responsible dog owner. But if we're going <laughs> to say people who own dogs, the least, the lowest hurdle is to put the thing on a leash and have it on a leash at all times in public spaces. Yeah. But they can't even do that. They can't even do that. Well, the thing is, again, they, they, they don't take responsibility. So when there's a bad outcome, it's always somebody else's fault. It's never them. Um, that's why I put in the Ten Commandments that, you know, dogs and dog owners are all perfect. So if any bad outcome is the fault of someone or something else. I And I've shared this story before also. I'll go into it real quick. There is a situation like that in a state park here in Florida, out towards the West Coast in Hillsborough County. And um, I often talk up because even when I was a hike leader, I used to really... I was really chummy with a lot of park staff. So I just got talking to this park ranger at one point and we were talking Then the situation or the conversation turned to dogs. And she said, we had a situation here recently where the whole extended family came to hike and they had their Labrador with them. They let the dog off leash and there's a, you know, river flowing through the park that's infested with alligators. So the dog jumped into the water, Bam, gator took him, ripped him right in half. And the gators don't see the dogs as threats. I mean, from the gator's perspective, it's like being attacked by a cheesecake or something or or like or, or, or a slab of prime rib. You know, they're like, yay, taste. Because alligators are ambush predators. They want the prey to come to them. So anyway, so this the alligator took, takes it, deletes the dog. And you know what she said? She like her face, like, she had just like her eyes kind of bulged out. She said, you know what's really surprising about it? You know what really shocked all of us? And I said, no, what, what? And she said, the owner took responsibility. I mean, does that, if she, she said that it blew our minds because he said, when something like that happens, they never, even though the dog was off leash in an on leash area. And he says stuff like that happens more often than you think. And it's, but they never take responsibility. Now, this is a, like the first time the owner said, you know what? It was my fault. I shouldn't have let Rover off leash. And almost gave the whole park staff heart attacks. So like, attack. wow, like that's just stunning. You know? It is. <laughs> <laughs> but that's another good reason, because particularly around here, and yeah, those those Florida Gators, they love them some mutt meat. Mm -mm, tasty. <laughs> you know what? It jumps in the water and thrashes around like their usual water prey do, do I'm sure. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. And so they're just like on it, you know. Um, oh, well. I mean, oh, well. what are you going to do? It's like at least, yes, you know, it's, I mean, blaming the wildlife, it's sort of like, you know, that's when you walk out, you jaywalk and you get hit by a car. And in the middle of the night and you're wearing black clothing and you jaywalk and you get hit and you wonder why that happened. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, really? It, it, I just don't, I don't even know. I don't even know about it. I just don't even know. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do? Hey, I want to segue into the next topic because I wanted to talk about, um, kind of do a recap of last time talking about the the dog cultists, you know, intelligence and maturity levels, and also some of the archetypes, you know, indicated there. And um, there was this uh, canine's been really going after the, the service dog folks recently, and good for him because they can, they, they, you can't put too much heat on those people. But um, well, you can see here, because I actually I posted a very pithy comment and I, right here, I write, did my effing comment get deleted? Now, I figured Kanan didn't do it. It's probably the YouTube overlords. Even though it was a very well thought out reply to this person who was just spewing nonsense after nonsense after nonsense, you know. Well, going back to you, we were talking earlier about the dog people trying to act like a psychiatrist. Like, and the only reason for any of this is because you have so much pent up hate <laughs> For yourself, you know? Okay. Project yeah, whatever. <laughs> and that is just sad. But, okay, why, like, I, I don't really care. Like, d does this person really think we that we care what they think about us? And, and Kanan says, look, it's not, this isn't about me. 
It's about, you know, dogs in society and specifically service dog fraud and the, the all the problems indicated with a service dog scenario, right? And this, so it's all this stuff there and it's like, they are highly trained service dogs that are there for their handlers' medical needs, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I saw that. It was just like it was on service the dogs are also potty trained. Well, the, here's the problem is that there's no standards at all. Like they don't even have to prove that the dog is potty trained. They all they got to do is oops. You know, they don't need to prove anything to anybody. That's the problem. So actually, I posted this. Um you know, that's why they actually have, there's a channel on the Discord for my deleted YouTube comment. Because often if I post something like this that's well thought out and pithy, I do save it because the stuff gets deleted a lot. Yeah. So I said, so I said, your gross, outrageous, and immature tantrum on here does not help your case. And if you go back and look at this, it's like going back to their intelligence and maturity level. This is not exactly the sharpest knife in the drawer. In no. fact, I think of all your different, you know, archetypes. Am I pronouncing it archetypes? Whatever. Archetypes. archetypes. archetypes yeah. In the, you know, dog nutter universe i think actually the the service dog proponents really are the dumbest and that's really saying something like this person makes ssr look like voltaire or or <laughs> aristotle or something right yeah. i mean th this is just this is embarrassing you know I mean? it really was it was like cringy to read and i was it's like I just to that read. Going, really yeah if you use the word project one more time, you'll be hidden from this channel. It's actually in a way that serves a purpose, though, because this goes, IHD says these people make our points for us, and yeah. here they are doing it. The same kind of thing happened. You know, Chef and I collaborated on a, a service dog video, I guess it was maybe a year or so ago, and that sort of drew the same kind of, you know, comment spam and th this per where is that oh yeah so this is one of the one of the service dogs this chugs service dog person saw fit to just make you know again comment after comment after comment of this stream of consciousness word salad oh. look at this I already said I barley go into public myself. Everyone else does stuff because I can't even when I have him a struggle. He just helps unless I uh, it's I have to go somewhere. Then he goes. But it literally been months since I've been anywhere that isn't pet friendly. So I've only been maybe two to th like look at like do you want some fresh ground pepper on that word salad? It's like how about some ranch dressing? It's like, this is, this is terrible. Right. And you also realize too, is that, yeah, you know, these dealing with somebody, this is a really immature person. This is somebody with literally with the mind of a child. So is this one or where is yeah. that? Yeah. This person too, they think they're clever, you know, with sort of the being the armchair psychiatrist. It's like, why do you hate yourself so much? Not like no actual psychiatrist would, would actually ask a, a, a patient that, but they, but that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to, they're kind of trying to look smart, but they really, they're really not. They just look stupid. Um, yeah. And he's just, but that's interesting too. The service dog thing is like, when has he said he hates people with disabilities? But that's the thing too. Is yeah, they're going for the, you know, the ad hominem attack. You know, anybody who's even remotely critical of the service dog paradigm is, you know, you hate disabled people. It's like, well, actually, no. I mean, I, and I'm not trying to deny anybody access to anything. But one of the points I made. You know, in response to that. So, you know, I said the service dog paradigm is inherently unethical for a lot of reasons. That's the least of which it enables widespread abuse, fraud, and law breaking. In fact, the law, such as it is, indeed inhibits the access rights of truly disabled people or allergic to dogs, afraid of dogs, or simply do not want to be forced to associate with dogs, right? And plus, that's and that's just at the a superficial level. There's like more problems even beyond that. 
Because that's what this person here is saying, like is said repeatedly. It's like, well, if you don't like these things in public spaces, just stay the hell home, which, you know, is basically that the sort of counter to the whole basic idea of this, because the idea is to increase accessibility, to make these public places accessible to more people. But I don't believe it's doing that. And often you'll get somebody, you know, just someone who states are disabled on, you know, one of the dog free Reddit saying that like, yeah, I have a terrible dog allergy, but that doesn't matter. Right. Because the needs of the dog person or the interests are always the overriding priority. So if you have a situation where you have, let's say, if somebody in a coffee shop with some BS medical alert dog, right outside, you've got a guy in a wheelchair and a blind person neither of which with a dog, and they both have really bad dog allergies. So how do you reconcile that? Well, you tell the blind guy and the paraplegic to go fuck off, right? If you can't eat next to a dog, then you just need to stay the hell out of there. And that's really one glaring problem with this is that, and that's the point I make often, and I can't emphasize enough, that the service dog scenario really has nothing to do or little to do with assisting disabled people. It's an expression of the dog cult. So even if you have a legit disabled person with a dog, they're not pursuing it because they because it's the best way to mitigate the disability. They're they're showing their devotion to dog. That's why they're doing it. So this is really all about, it's all about dog owner interests and everything else, if if it's a consideration at all, is secondary. That's That's absolutely, yeah. Yeah. I read, I mean, I recently read through the ADA laws again, and that's exactly what it says. It basically says, you know, because that issue is brought up like allergies and whatever. And they're like, well, kind of too bad. Everybody else has to work around the person with the dog. It's just yep. what it is. You got to yep, all work because- around. Fuck y'all. You know, if you have an allergy too fucking bad, well, you know, the, 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 the business may may make an effort to try and accommodate you. But really, we have to all circle the wagon around the dog. Yep. Yep. It's all about protecting and the, the dog and the dog owner interest. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, because that's really what, you know, it's canine supremacy. That's what it's about. You know, it's not, it really has nothing to do with it. Of course, you know, people have made the point a million times. They're like, well, there's better, you know, electronic aids or assistance from fellow humans is really a much better way to mitigate the disability. But the thing is to them, that doesn't matter because to them, it's like they have a right to bring their dog everywhere, right? And they're just, they're just going to keep doing that until somebody tells them to stop, whether they have a legit disability or not, you know. And it, but that's the other thing. You can't, even in that hypothetical scenario I gave earlier, you got one person with a health problem and a dog, but they're actually placed higher than two other people with what would be considered legit disabilities and no dog, right? Yeah. So really, yeah, it's, it's all about the dog. And dog owner interests. That's really all it's about. So I also think, I mean, I also, I mean, this is sort of just a, a hypothetical thing. I, I think, you know, it just seems to me based on the way I see that these, these, these dog owner, these fake service dog owners, I mean, think about how many of them like to go recording themselves when they go into stores just to, just to try and get attention. They do yep. it because they know they're just trying to create drama. They're like, look, I'm going in here with my dog and I'm just going to wait for people to to question and challenge me on it. Or I'm yep. going to go in and confront the other fake service dog owners. And then you get the singularity thing. Oh, happening. that's, that's the that's best. Yeah. They're all standing the around. Thing. Colony. Well, the other well, thing too, the other big tell here is that even the quote, legit service dog people, even the ones that complain, because actually they complain about fake service dogs more than people like us do. They at least claim to hate the fakes. And I would tell them, and it was even last decade when I was blogging, I would say, well, if you would submit to some oversight, right, and make it a permitted it. activity, that would, that would, I mean, I don't know if it would, you know, it's appeal to perfection. Or they'd say, well, you know, people are going to get fake IDs or whatever. But it's like, okay, but it would get rid of 90% of them. So it would vastly improve the situation. They won't do it. They are adamant that there is 
gonna, they're not going to submit to any real standards at all. None. And that's actually an expression of dog culture also. Even like, you know, the it encounter is. you had with that person in the park the other day is that they're, you know, probably the foundation of dog culture ideology is that dogs and dog owners are subject to no binding or restraint whatsoever, period. Conversation over. It's, it, it's never going to happen. Ever. And they're all adamant about it. But what it is is, yeah, they're they're essentially self-destructing over it because it's already getting to the point where, you know, a quote legit service dog can no longer can't function in that environment. Because it's yeah, it's gonna be, you know, attacked or aggressed towards by fake service dogs and and be spoiled. And that yeah. happens a lot also. So Yeah, well, it's not our it's not that's that is not my, that's not our problems. I mean, our problems are just that, and I don't know, you know, and here's another thing on that same, uh, same note. Um, in one, in my reply to that, um, that Carrie person, I, I posted a link to um, something that was basically, it was a survey done of, of service dog owners. And it said that basically 92% of the people who'd, who'd answered the survey, and these are people we are assuming with legitimate service dogs, I mean, people maybe that paid, you know, 20 grand for them or something like that, um, said at some point they'd had a negative interaction with a fake service dog. To me, I can extrapolate that and say that to me, that means probably at least nine out of 10 dogs that you see that are so that are quote unquote service dogs are fake. Oh, it's probably, and it's probably more than that. I mean, it probably is. because you could say, I mean, it provided that, I mean, a anybody can pursue that provided they're willing, they can lie convincingly. And if the dog is relatively well behaved, you know, if it's a well behaved dog, they're going to get away with it. They only get into trouble. Like, yeah, if it starts behaving dangerously or craps on the floor or barking incessantly or whatever, then that draws a lot of negative. But as long as the dog is relatively well behaved, I, I think, I mean, it's, 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 it's painfully obvious that the vast majority of people pursuing that activity are doing so in bad faith. Yes. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, this is, uh, but I wanted to bring this up because, yeah, the, the, but what's interesting is, you know, the people agitating in favor of this service dog paradigm really are just the dumb, dumbest asses on <laughs> earth. I mean, even for dog people, when I say that, like, you know, this carry person, or this, this chug, this, well, it used to be, I think it was Isabel and Chugs. They do. They make they make other dog like SSR or even Terry Francis. They make it look like, you know, Aristotle and Voltaire or something. It's just I mean, by because, you know, it's all relative. I mean, by comparison, it's like, yeah, they're like a pair of towering geniuses compared to these clowns. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're like they're like two of the great minds of our time, or at least in dog culture, they are. <laughs> um, I think they do. It's like, I mean, at least they can crank out a coherent sentence once in a while, you know, unlike these, some of these, sir, but that, I think it says something about it. You know, it's the company you keep that, you know, people, it seems like almost everybody promoting the service dog paradigm is he dumb as a rock and, or has a worldview of a three-year-old. <laughs> You know. Seriously, I mean, I really do think a lot of these people are emotionally stunted, and their, they, you know, their dog for them is just an extension. It's a way to, for them to like try to appear as to have some sort of like, how will I say, social clout or or some some sort of they would other get like otherwise maybe get completely ignored and like trampled over in society um, because of the way society just is doesn't give a shit about people's like problems you know what i mean i mean they're emotional <laughs> problems it just doesn't care it's sort of like that you know the world doesn't care about your your problems it's not going to come to a grinding halt because you have some personal issue yeah you gotta, you gotta you know pull up your pull up your big girl or big boy panties and get on with it and act like just grow a pair or just, yeah. just act like you know 
grow the fuck up, basically. And you, you know, I'm like, it seems like a perpetual state of adolescence or childhood where they're the victim. I mean, again, like I said, you know, we see these videos of these people videotaping themselves. And it's all about creating drama and putting themselves as a victim. And everybody else is out to oppress them. And yeah. if anybody calls them out on it, they're just a, a hateful oppressor and da 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 da. And they're they're a Karen and and they deserve public scorn. And let's find them out and let's shame them because oh my gosh, I can't take my PTSD dog, you know, into the bar, you know, and and whatever. I mean victim mentality. It's you know what it's addicting because there's plenty of people out there that feed it. Yeah. 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 yeah and, and people will virtue signal for them. They're like, yes. oh, yeah, I'm going to, you know, go to the aid of this, you know, poor, oppressed, you know, service dog person. You know, the dog is all they have to help them, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unfortunately, it well, that's, it's like, the, doesn't it suck to be them then? <laughs> what kind of a situation I, is that what? to be in? I can't even imagine it, but they do. They use the dog as a cudgel because a social cudgel. Um, and like a bully, a way to just be a bully when otherwise yep. they would be the ones being bullied or ignored in society. So it's a way for them to, and with dog, like I said, dog culture just totally enables that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, thing is, yeah, they and you know, they're enabled because of, you know, in the current culture, you know, dogs and dog people can do no wrong. Everything they do is, is good and virtuous by definition. <laughs> Although I think that's starting to change too, because people are starting to more and more people are starting to question this. Um, yes. And you know, yes, I went like I said, I went to Publix grocery shopping fairly recently. You know, Publix is a big grocery chain down here, and they have you go in on the entrances. There's big signs, no pets, and it even goes in like slightly smaller letters. It says emotional service animals are not service your know, emotional support yeah, animals are not service animals it said you know actual trained service dogs only so you know and i think it does i haven't seen a dog in there in a while maybe it kind of scared some of them off like got rid of the really low effort fakes perhaps so he yeah. still needs a proofing system but it's an improvement and of course i think as you pointed out what that'll do is that'll dr drive the nutters to other venues like Win Dixie or Walmart or Aldi <laughs> or whatever, but then because that just increases the the concentration of dogs in these other places. But then that will drive change there. Then they yes. will institute those policies. I think the last time I was at a Win Dixie, they had a no pet sign also, though it was less. I mean, you can see it, but it wasn't. I mean, the the public side it's like two huge signs on either side of the door flanking. No pets, you know. They they're not they're not kidding around. So, um, Win Dixie was a little less obvious, I guess. But because um, I've seen in Win once, I was in a Win Dixie and I saw two dogs in there <sighs> at once. Um, that was a while ago, though. And I've seen dogs. I went in there once. There was a dog in a shopping cart barking. Oh, my God. I think and the staff was trying to say something. One of the one of the staff members had confronted them. And she sort of had her hands up. You could see she was trying to, like, trying to be rational with a person because it's like, well, yeah, no dogs in grow. Even if it's a legit service dog. No, no. Well, I say no animals, but it's always a dog right in grocery carts. So, so maybe, it, you know, it's starting to turn. There's a ways to go yet, but I think it's um, maybe the worst of this is behind us. We hope. <laughs> God, I hope so. I'm so yeah. sick of it, man. And, every, you know, I really think you're right. More and more people are getting sick of it because I see more comments cropping up. Like even on that, on that, that um, subreddit from my town that I posted, if you read through the comments, and there's not a whole lot of comments on that, but there are people, I mean, the guy, the first guy posting the thing was just like, first had to make the disclaimer. I like dogs, really. I do like dogs, but I mean, you shouldn't even have to say that. You should just be able to say, "Listen, we were in a Baskin Robbins, and a freaking dog came up and was trying to like get in my son's face in the store and eat his ice cream." Yeah, but I don't care if you like dogs or not. That's inexcusable. It's it, just yeah. what the fuck is that? Yeah, well, that's a kind of thing that should be kicked. Because clearly, that's one hundred percent fake. And yeah, and that's a food service establishment. I mean. And that kind of was interesting in this comment thread. Canaan got into it because the 
the the nut or that carry person was being sort of pedantic. He said, well, you know, service dogs are not a health code violation. He said, well, yeah, but that's the thing is, it is kind of contradictory. Dogs in, in food establishments are a per se health code violation. What happens is that the feds came in and they granted not a right. See, this person is claiming rights. They do not have a right to do this. What they have is power. Yes. They have power because you can override somebody. It's sort of like bestowing just like a political executive or a police officer has been granted certain powers, things that normal people can't do. Like you can't search somebody's car if you have probable cause. Only a police officer can do that. They have power. So this one it says too, it says like, you're the one demanding Americans give up their American rights. And actually, you know, there's no, there's no really rights in play here. I mean, they claim that it is, but the service dog scenario, you know, it grants power to dog owners. Then the power to, you know, against bypass, well, not just other people's rights, because that that's never a consideration either. If you want, you know, if your town has said no dogs in grocery stores, if you're the grocery store propri proprietor, you say you don't want dogs in there. Even if your state says there's no dogs in grocery stores. Well, feds came in and did bypassed all this. You know what, dog people, as long as you say the magic words, you're in. And it tramples the rights of not just the Fourth Amendment rights, First Amendment rights, Tenth Amendment rights, just, it just tramples all that with these powers they've been granted. And dog people, I think, generally have been granted a lot of a lot of power in the system. That's why there's so much protection for these things, but so little from it. Yep. Uh, I'd like to move on to a, another topic. Hey, Sheepy, you still there? Yep. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we were going to, we were talking the other day, because uh, one topic that comes up, and I, I guess you wanted to talk about it, was, um, and I had some thoughts on the issue also, was, you know, dogs in dating and in and, and relationships. Um, I mean, I can dive into that, or did you have any thoughts on that? Um. Yeah, so essentially, like, I'm not dating so I don't have like direct experience but I see a lot of conversation around this topic and I thought it would be interesting because um just from the female perspective there's some different I think you know men and women both are struggling with the today's dating culture and especially as it relates to like not wanting to interact with dogs while yeah. dating but um I just think that maybe there's some interesting like differences or like different experiences that women have specifically when it comes to like dogs and dating or just like established relationships so just with that in mind uh i wanted to talk about a few i guess examples so um one thing i wanted to start with is just the experience of women as like dating a guy who's like loves their dog more like i saw a post on uh dog free recently where this girl was like I wouldn't have believed this unless it happened to me but I was dating this guy for a few months and it was going really well I really liked him I thought he really liked me but he has this dog that I'm not really that into and you know the topic came up of like future like having kids eventually and things like that and basically the guy dumped her because he said that like his dog would always be number one and it's like a child to him and she was just like, I can basically like never do that. Like that's never gonna be how I feel about dogs. So he like literally dumped her yep. over his dog. <laughs> and I just I don't know. I feel like this sort of thing happens to women a lot more than is recognized. Like I think there's a lot of uh tropes about the pit mommies and stuff like that, but I see so often women suffering in relationships or dating because of dogs and yeah. so I just thought it would be a good topic to discuss yeah I mean I, I don't want to make it because you know there's plenty of there are plenty of demented dog moms out there also I don't know who but I think it is 
there are differences, I think, particularly, I mean, my thought was, was that I think if there's children involved, I mean, typically people expect the, you know, women to sort of carry most of the freight when it comes to child rearing, right, particularly yes. little kids. So, you know, if there's a dog in the mix, then that that would put probably more perhaps could put more stress on her pregnant if yeah. she's pregnant because yeah we discussed in the discord the other day i was thinking about that i was like hmm, you think having to wrestle a half a dozen rottweilers when you're eight months pregnant would that be a problem i'm thinking yeah i, I could see that being a problem <laughs> yeah well i had um that's where i wanted to go with this next is with like so aside from dating once you're already in an established relationship. I see so many stories about women who are either pregnant or already have small children. And the dog is, if, if it's not a direct threat, like let's say, like sometimes it is, sometimes the women are like, this dog growls at my baby and yep. my husband refuses to get rid of it. Cause he said, it's like one of our children and the woman <laughs> Kind of like the mother bear, you know what I mean? Wants yeah. to deal with the threat to her, like, young, but is being hindered by the man in the relationship, by her husband or fiancé or boyfriend or whatever, because yeah. he is so attached to the dog that he views it almost like more, equal. he says equally to the children, but he's putting his actual children in danger for yeah. the dog. And the yeah, woman is just at her wit's end. There's a lot of social pressure too because you read those, you know, tales from the doghouse, and and it may seem like you know probably I think women may be more likely to speak out about it also, um, but uh, yeah, I mean they um, what was I guess now I completely lost my my train. I thought oh, I was just saying there's there's social pressure also, particularly today because you could you could never give up a dog. Right. Because if you get rid of the dog, you're going to be hated by everyone forever. You know, it's a heresy, you know, in, in, in dog cult ideology. So there's probably a, there's probably a lot of social pressure also. Um, yeah, but, that pressure is on everyone, you know, yeah, obviously not, not just on men or women. But yeah. um, it's just interesting to me because like men don't experience pregnancy or, you know, they don't have the exact same, I guess, relationship to children that women do as far as just like by like physically, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, if you're trying to take care of like an 80 pound Rottweiler, well, <laughs> your back is hurting and you're like tired because you're like heavily pregnant, you yep. know, or you're being forced. Like you said, a lot of a lot of times, even today, like women are kind of like expected by default to be like the one doing even in fairly like equitable relationships, a lot of times women are kind of the ones that take like a larger share of domestic duties, like cleaning or like Absolutely. changing diapers and stuff like that. And that yeah. that applies to the dog when there's a dog in the house. The even if the man's the one who wants the dog, like he's like, this is my best friend. Like I love this dog. <laughs> like it was there for me in the hard times or whatever. The woman's the one who's like cleaning up its piles of crap in the house, or like yeah, the yeah, because that's the thing is, is that the well, I mean, they, yeah, there, there's definitely a lot of differences there. Um, plus, too, is you know, men tend to be, you know, physically larger and say, oh well, if the dog, you know, if Rover pits out, I can handle it. But you know, your wife or your two year old probably can't. That that there's a problem there also. Um, you know, yeah. I. I have lost track of the number of posts I've read on dog on uh, tales from the doghouse, mostly, but dog free of women complaining of that exact thing. They're like, you know what? Yeah. We had this dog. I got pregnant. My husband works full time. I either work from home or I'm, I stay at home with our baby. And, you know, my husband claims to love this dog so much and all he never even interacts with it. And he shoved off all the responsibility on me to clean up its shit, vacuum keep it away from the babies and all this stuff. And every time I tell him, you need to help me out with this, he goes, no, I can't get rid of it because I love it. And he never did, he never interacts with it. I mean, she's like, I hear these women say, he never even interacts with a dog. Yeah, or the yeah. interaction he has with it is like, 
he gets home from work after she spent the day trying to like scrub the piss out of the rugs or whatever. But then <laughs> it jumps up on the couch that she probably had to clean and vacuum. And he rubs all over it and snuggles it first, you know, walks in the house past his wife and kids straight to the dog. Or the dog just like barrels past the wife and kids, knocks the kid over <laughs> on the way to the man and yeah. like jumps up on him, licks his face. He's like, oh, I'm so happy to see you. I love you, blah, blah, blah. And she's just like haggard, tired in the background, like thousand yard stare, you know, baby on her hip, you know, and he's like cuddling with the dog on the couch or whatever. Yeah, and, like, and that's she his says- interaction. And she's like worn out, tired, had to deal with the dog all day. And then on top of it, what he'll so she'll say, listen, I, this is like reaching a breaking point and you need to either help me out with this or I'm going to we need to get rid of the dog. And then he goes off on the whole, well, if you get rid of the dog you know, I'll resent you forever. We're not yes. getting rid of it. Yeah, and instead of you. offering, instead of being showing any empathy yeah. or offering to step up and like actually do more about it, he just, again, just says, you know what, if you get rid of the dog, we're done here or something. And I did, that stuff makes me, again, that's just one of those things that I just, I, I can't intake that a lot of that stuff because it sends my, like, my rage level up to like, <laughs> It's like level 11. Yeah, and I think what happens yes, too, though, story, is yeah. there's, no, there's no boundaries in a lot of these, because I've read a lot of those also. There's no boundaries set for the dog, particularly from the from the dog parent, so to speak, right? It's like, yeah, the dog's allowed to, you know, it's not housebroken. It's, you know, it, it tears everything up. It's, you know, there's, there's no, there's no boundaries. Even somebody like my stepdad was a dog person, but he would not put up with that. Yeah, like they were not allowed. The whole second floor of the house was off limits, right, where the bedrooms were. You know, they were not allowed in the kitchen, at least when food was being prepared or consumed, all that kind of stuff. But it seems that, you know, a dog culture, we'll talk about like, you know, gender differences. I think it was the um, dog culture review host stumbled onto something at one point where someone was claiming that expecting a dog to behave as patriarchal like basically it's an expression of toxic masculinity there's what these dudes need to be told it's like dude step up and discipline your dog do what you gotta do you know stop it's not a two-year-old kid it's a dog you know and treat it as such but that's a problem yeah many particularly today that's 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 not that's no longer politically correct i guess so Oh, that reminds me yesterday. I forgot to, this was, this was something I saw earlier on my walk yesterday. Um, you know, again, it's just, this trail's full of, full of people with dogs. There was a dude walking two of his dogs and down, you know, just, and another dog walked past it and his dog like started barking and acting like an asshole. This guy, to his credit, I watched him take his dog down. He like took his dog down literally and like pushed it down on the ground and got put his hand around its throat and was yelling at it and saying, what are you doing? No. And just was like disciplining it like you, like dogs do to each other and like wolves do, you know, where they, yep. they um, discipline each other. And I was like, I was like, wow. You got to <laughs> you know, show like, them yeah. who's boss. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I mean, today that's considered animal abuse to like not, and you hear it from all kinds of people. It's, you know, to not allow the dog to just do whatever it wants is fascist somehow. You know, and that's that's part of the problem also. But um, I think, but I guess today, though, you know, it has to be, I mean, it's something probably most people don't think of until it happens to them or somebody they know. But, you know, I had some thoughts about this because we get, and, I, you know, but I hear it from, you know, men and women because the women say, yeah, or like if they're trying to date, not necessarily in, in an established relationship yet, but the women say, all I meet are these psycho dog dads. Right. <laughs> but the men say the same thing. All I meet are these flaky dog moms. It's like particularly, I guess, the dating sites are just swamped with them. And I, I, I haven't used one of those applications for quite a while. I mean, I think we discussed last time, the last time I dabbled in Internet dating, really being an outdoorsy person was a big thing, you know, uh, you know, hiking or mountain biking or whatever. That was a hip thing. 
And people always put that front and center, right? Even if they weren't really into it, because the other thing is that I think most people really aren't very honest on those dating profiles. But now it's dogs. It's everybody is about, you know, dog this and dog that. And I know a long time, well, not a long time ago, but back maybe it's late 2022 when I first started doing these. I guess we had a woman on here who stated that, yeah, she met some guy to this dating app and he said something to the effect of he's like i'll i think he actually put it in his profile he's like my dog is always number one he's my best friend i'm always gonna love him more than you so why are you and looking think, for a for but he just right right up front you know right up front he said flat out look ladies i'm always gonna love rover more than you straight up and I guess maybe you could give him kudos for being honest, but like who wants to get involved with somebody like that? But right. <laughs> exactly. It, it's just insane. Like who would say that to me? Well, but the thing is, I guess in dog culture, that's normalized. Like it's you always put the dog's interest first. But this raises a question I've had for a while now, which is why are these nutters not just dating each other then? And they can both be in some weird relationship where each of them like loves their dog the most. Yeah. Like, it seems like they want someone without a dog to foist their dog upon. You know what I mean? That's exactly that's, what they want. Yeah, that I is what they want. on the head. Yep, that is what they want. Well, it's a proselytizing religion. And plus, two people who, who have that level of dysfunction cannot be in a relationship. And I think another thing <laughs> is, like, all of these people, like, they claim, you know, they love dogs. And then they'll say things like you just said, like, my dog is number one, will always be the most important thing to me. But they, like, don't. But dogs suck so much that even these people, like, hate everyone else's dog. <laughs> like, yeah, they do. They don't want yeah. another dog in the scenario because the dogs would fight each other, cause even, like, double the mess. Like, they want their dog and they want someone to, like, basically be a second, I guess, parent or caretaker to their dog who they see as some super special snowflake dog, even though every fucking dog is the same. Like, they're, like every <laughs> single dog is literally the same. Like, but they treat these dogs like they're so unique and special. And I'm like, every dog I see is doing the same dumb shit, like, constantly. There's no, you can't tell one from another. <laughs> like, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I have no, it's true. It, it's interesting, though, because, yeah, it's like, it almost, well, kind of, we were talking about, like, Sonia and I were talking about dog free parks and the like in the beginning. And, um, but it's, you know, that one thought I had on that is, you know, like dog people, they want dog free places to bring their dog to, right? Like, for example, that, that man you met, you know, walking as German Shepherd in a dog free area, probably he may go there, you know, it's, it's intentional because he doesn't, because, yeah, there's all kinds of, dog friendly places to bring the dog when I bring his dog there well because it's going to be full of other dogs that are barking and crapping and behaving aggressively and all that and he doesn't want to deal with it you know he'd rather just be in peace with his own dog right with his own special dog which is perfect and nobody else's dog is like his you know that, that's yeah. how they exactly <laughs> this brings up one other thing about dog dating or dating dog people that I wanted to uh talk about which i think is just unbelievably like crazy like it's bad enough we've all maybe experienced like dating someone or like trying to date someone who's like still hung up on an ex or whatever you know and you're just yeah. like weirded out because like okay this guy's like or this girl's like texting her ex still they like i don't know it's just weird like are you over him like am i a rebound but imagine like there's people out there who are like, yeah, I have to communicate with my ex still while we're dating because we share custody of like our dog. <laughs> <laughs> like, can you imagine? I don't know, man. That just really trips me out. Like, that's such you can't a do one thing, ex. you know. But like, custody you're still in contact with your ex because of the you. You literally like need to like exchange the dog to share like custody. <laughs> That's such a red flag. That just has like screaming, like nope, 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 all over it. Like just run the, you know, just like turn and crab walk away from that situation, like fast. <laughs> right? Like my God, it would be tough enough, you know, being like, you know, sharing custody of kids or whatever. But like, 
I don't know. I just can't get over the idea of like you're dating someone and you're like, hey, yeah, I won't be available for a few hours. Like Saturday morning, I have to meet my ex to exchange like the dog. It's her week with the dog. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, it just makes, I swear to God, it makes you, it just makes your brain like, I, I lose brain cells when I, when I hear about these things. I'm just like, is this really, am I living in the same reality that these people are living in? I mean, it, it is, it, I don't even know. I mean, I, yeah, I guess though that the, you know, I, I tend to be, I guess, results or solution oriented because normally, cause this is something like we get into a lot on here, you know, in, in my space to talk about laws public policies, things like that. And this is, I mean, it's, it's an interesting issue. It's a very, you know, the dog nuts polluting the dating pool is actually, I think, a fairly serious social issue that needs to be addressed. But it's, there's nothing like, you know, like our legal system is not going to address it, certainly, right? So I'm thinking like, what, how do people avoid this? Like, how do you, how, how do you avoid those people, particularly if you're using dating apps? Because what I find, found interesting was, and I don't remember, but, you know, those, or I don't, don't remember specifically, but those dating apps have, and you know, a, a date, interestingly, like computerized dating services actually go back to the 1960s. They're really nothing new. They've been around for a while. Um, it's just that, you know, they went online when, you know, the internet was created. And they have, you know, it's 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 a data processing problem, you know, matching people based on interests, right? It could be just babe, well, gender, women seeking men or vice versa, height, body type, education level, religion, hobbies. Um, you know, all sorts of things you can select on, right? Smoking or non-smoking, drinking habits, um, all kinds of things. And I'm thinking it's kind of odd, or, or I guess that the this pets or dogs are not a selection criteria, or they're not a data point that's been added to these applications. Because here's here's a thought I had. Like I said, I'm solution oriented. And maybe it's draft letter time, but I'm thinking that, okay, if you're somebody pursuing internet dating, how or what steps could we take to filter these people out, right? Say for pet preferences. So if you take, like, I'm thinking there's probably a couple of data points, each with a few states. So you have, if you can see my screen here, I'll zoom in on this. So you have your first data point is do they have dogs, right? And that could be a yes, no, or does it matter? So you could search on that. You could say, yes, I want someone who has a dog. No, I don't want someone who has a dog, or it doesn't matter, right? And you'd answer that question for yourself. Do you, do you have dogs? And the other one would be, do you like dogs or want them, right? So there's another one that could be the same thing. Yes, no, doesn't matter, right? So you can filter, you, know, you would enter this into your resume and you could filter these people in or out as desired, right? So I want somebody definitely, do they want dogs? So that's a, that's a definite hard no. Now, of course, this is provided that people are you know, entering their information in good faith and in, in an accurate way. But I'm kind of surprised that these dating apps don't have this or they should. You know, they should be contacted. Say, I want, you know, I want to exclude people who have dogs and or don't want them. Now, you could have some of these states, you could have somebody who has a dog, but they don't like them. Mainly, maybe they're taking care of the dog for a relative while they're overseas for the military say right and somebody like that's like okay but yeah as soon as my brother gets back from wherever he's at from korea boom that dog is going right back right so somebody like that is think okay you know they're not they they have a dog but they're not a dog person so you know you should be able to 
you know, filter these people out. And I'm kind of surprised that these dating apps, maybe they do have it. Maybe some do and some don't. I don't know. But it might be worth, you know, contacting them. I'm sure they have some kind of public affairs. Uh... Yeah, it seems like from what I from what people say, I mean, again, I'm not I'm not on the dating, the dating thing either. I haven't I've been out. I mean, I met my my now husband through Yahoo, Yahoo Personals back when I was living in Arizona and stuff. And dogs, I just, like I said, I mean, I don't remember ever seeing like people, there were no people, I don't remember ever seeing pictures of people with dogs and I never dated anybody. I never dated anybody who owned a dog. So it was just like a not, or a cat for that matter. It was a non-issue. But I mean, nowadays what I see is people saying, oh gosh, you know, it's just all it is. But you're right, a screening thing would just really cut cut through the cut through the you know we would separate the wheat from the chaff as it would as yeah it i think you do too is it turns out if somebody answers this like in bad faith because like we were just discussing you know dog it seems like well i mean dogs are a proselytizing religion so some you know level five dog nut might think okay I'm going to look for people who doesn't like dogs. I'm going to try to convert them, you know, to the faith or whatever. You know? Right. But those people could be screened out too, because it could be just like, you know, you know, that type of fraud, you know, they could be, you know, kicked off the app for pulling that shit, you know? Um, I don't, can, I honestly don't understand why anybody, how anybody thinks they could get away with that. Because if you make it really clear that you don't like dogs and somebody says, well, well, they're going to like my dog because my dog's this, the best dog ever said every yeah. other dog owner. But anyways, if they say that and they, they lie about it, um, you know, somebody's going to figure that shit out really fast. You go out on a date and they're covered with dog hair. They say, oh, well, I got to go home and take care of my dog. And you're like, wait a minute on your profile. You said you did not own a dog. Okay. Peace out. We're done here. And that's yeah. it. Or even that, that, or if you just talk to them on the phone and they're like, yeah, my dog this and my dog that and my dog, 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 dog. dog. I was like, all right, fine. You just fine. hear it in the background, like, going You hear it barking. You know? Seriously. <laughs> These people can't <laughs> shut the fuck up about their dogs. <laughs> I mean, they just can't. They're, like, incessantly talking about them. You would yeah. think that dog nutters would be for this, too, right? You would think. Like they would want to know, like, I don't want to waste my time dating someone that's never going to love my fluffy. Like, you know what I mean? But right. they don't, I don't know. I feel that they're something I've seen and I can't say I've experienced this personally because I don't like, I'm not dating, but I've, I've seen people complain that like, like you were saying, like they will say, I don't like dogs or I don't want dogs. And people will literally either go out of their way to try to date them and like convert them yeah. Or just send them like hate messages. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how that works. Like they can just send them messages like, "I can't believe what terrible person you are for not loving dogs and stuff," which is insane. <laughs> like just move on, but like they can't. <laughs> no, and it's like thanks for reinforcing my point about why I don't want to date a dog nutter. Right, exactly. I don't know how that's lost on these nutters, but it, yeah. like it well, is but a religion. You know, I guess, but it so. comes to well, it goes it, the the go to the point that. You know, the yeah, dog people just think they're just so um, much better than everybody else. They're just amazingly special. And unfortunately, they're often treated that way. Kind of like, you know, these service dog provisions. Uh, but really, it's no different than any other selection criteria. Like, I remember, like, smoking preferences. You can say, okay, a smoker is a hard no. I, I, I just don't want smoke in my life, right? Um, actually, the okay, like allergies are real. Like maybe yeah. I break out in hives if around dog fur or whatever. Like yeah. it seems obvious. I don't know. Maybe we should look. Well, what like they we would do is they would tell you, so you're a bad person for not getting, you know, allergy treatments or just, oh, right. you know, it's like, whatever. you know, <laughs> um, and actually, you know, people with other interests, like say like the smoker, it's like, you know, maybe since you meet somebody and they're absolutely perfect, but they smoke, it's like, okay, you know, everything in life is a trade off, right? So you might say, okay, maybe I'll bend that rule for this person. Um, and you can't count on them quitting though, because if you get on their case about it, you're just going to get, they're just going to get them pissed at you, but you can set some boundaries. You can say, okay, uh, there's no smoking in the house. There's no smoking in a car. Or maybe if there is smoking, you can smoke in your home office, but nowhere else in the, you know, with a window open or something. But 
So, you know, you can set some boundaries there. And I think most smokers today would be okay with that. <clears throat> but that's the thing is, you know, dogs and dog ownership and dog behavior is not something that can be bound or, or restricted or limited in any way. You know, it's like if you say, okay, no dog in the bedroom. They're like, ah, you're the sport of Satan. Ah, you know, it's like. That comes that out more than you agree to it. Either that or they'll agree to it, and then they'll let it creep back in there. They'll, they'll let it creep yep. back in. Yep. yep, yep. And I see that that one a lot, actually, a surprising amount, which is really off-putting. But, yeah, like, you know, I came back to his place for the first time, and, like, the dog, like, would not stop, like, getting in between us, like, physically. <sighs> Or like it's in his sheets, like it's under the covers, like oh, or it's like laying at the foot of the bed, and I'm just like, I I can't do this. <laughs> and or he might agree to put it out of the room for a while, and then it's like outside the door the whole time, like clawing at the door and like barking and whining, and it's just like this is not really doing it for me at all. <laughs> like, yeah. <really. laughs> Anyways, but that happens a lot more than it seems to happen a lot more than you would think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, particularly because today, because so many dog people don't, you know, they don't train or discipline their dogs. So you have that bad behavior and it's tolerated. It's like, oh, you don't like listening to Rover whine and, and howl all night. Like what's wrong with you? <laughs> right. And the weird thing is too, they'll be like, oh, he, he's so sad. Can't you just hear him? And like trying to like guilt trip them into like letting him back in and stuff. It's just like, oh, <laughs> Yeah. That was the last time I saw him. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and more with the anthropomorphization of the dogs, too, because the dog is not sad. The dog has been spoiled and enabled to, you know, to allow this behavior, this unacceptable behavior to continue. And the owner does nothing about it. And then so it's just anthropomorphizes. Oh, look at he's sad and he misses you or he he wants to be with us. It's like, no, that's not it. You're you're not getting you're, you lost the plot. That's not that's not it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's more like that shows what the mental state of the dog owner. They're just exactly. projecting, right? Their own. So they're the ones that are sad and like, oh, I want to let him back in because I'm sad. I want him to be a part of this. Like, <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> Uh, I know. But I think, too, is it might be, I mean, because I know a lot of folks, I see even some folks in the Discord, you know, or like, you know, men and women are like, you know, this is so messed up, you know, because all I need is it's, it's just, the whole thing is flooded with dog moms or dog dads. You know, it might help, too, is that that I think a lot of those people are virtue signaling like back. I, I remember because it used to be. You know, the, the being an outdoorsy person was like the in thing. But then you meet them and if I, okay, maybe they went hiking once, <laughs> you know, you know, or they say, hey, I'm, I'm going to take, you know, the, the camper, you know, my camper to the, you know, to a state park for the weekend. You want to go? And they're like, no. <laughs> okay. It's not like they don't want to, they'd be fine spending it at my house watching TV, but that, no. Um. We can watch is, nature shows or go we'll watch nature maybe, no. shows. Yeah, because <laughs> um, that that happens a lot too. And actually, I got kind of burnt on that a couple of times. Probably it goes to the point too is to, you know, maybe like these dating apps are overrated. Try meet meeting people in the real world, perhaps. I know it's hard, but particularly if you're over a certain age, but. Yeah, like these these dating apps. It sounds like they're just, but yeah, they've been they've been totally poisoned by dog nuttery. It's crazy. It is really weird because I'll tell you what. I mean, you know, again, it's basically almost twenty years since I was single and stuff like that, and it was just not like that. And I can't I can't even imagine it now. I mean, I feel really sorry for people who are single and lonely and wanting to find somebody and that they're dog free, and then they. <laughs> they can't find anybody because it's all just a bunch of nutters, you know, and again, the profile, it's easy enough, at least at this point to screen people out because most people as, as both men and women say on, on dog, on uh, like dog free subreddit and stuff, it's like, everybody has a picture of their dog. So you can just, just immediately just, you know, that is a, like a, that's an easy way to just kind of just get swipe right by or just not just ignore them or block them or whatever. 
whatever you do to uh, just not to remove them from your from your search criteria. I mean, I don't know if like people are still using Match.com or what works. But I, I never use that one, but you know, a way to like block people and say, don't ever show me this profile again. I mean, it's don't they have something like that where you can just say, no, I don't need to have this this person's profile like recycled through my feed anymore. It's like harsh in my mellow. I don't, I'm yeah. not ever, like they're not even remotely appropriate for me. Yeah. I mean, too, is like, I think it'd be bet good if they added, like I said, these data points to the Absolutely. resume, because then you just don't even see, and you don't know what's like, even if it's somebody, because sometimes they'll ask about pets, like say if they ask what kind of pets you have, but that's not really indicative. Like that past performance doesn't always indicate future results. Because one thing you see on Tales of the Dog House quite a bit is they're both dog free. But then after they get married or the relationship becomes serious, at least one of them says, oh, I so totally got to get a dog. It'll it'll make my life complete. <laughs> You know? Right, and but that and that's always that, that's an interesting sort of pathology there because then like that partner will beg the other, please, will beg and beg and beg and beg. It's like, oh baby, I'll I'll do anything for you if if, if you know if you agree to the to the dog, please. So finally, the the other partner crumbles, but then when the dog comes into their once they get the dog, the one that wanted the dog wants nothing to do with it it's like they're, they're really what they were in love with the idea of having the dog once it, so it's the other partner the one that didn't want the. it's one thing to get into a relationship with somebody who already has a dog but this is a kind of a different scenario and then but the partner that didn't want the dog they get stuck taking care of it they oh, got to groom it they got to feed it they got to walk it they got to clean up after it they got to take it to the vet you know etc cetera, etc cetera, et cetera. and they're like this is bullshit this was I see that, happen. that happens so that's the other thing happens. that is the yep. other thing that happens probably i mean honestly wouldn't you say probably like i swear to god probably 85 percent of the post I see on, on Tales from the Doghouse or that exact fucking thing. Somebody's yeah. like, oh, they seem to love the dog and they punted all, they dumped off all the responsibility of me and I, I don't like dogs, but I don't want to see this dog suffer. So I paid for its training. I clean up its shit. I vacuum, I feed it. And he comes home, he or she comes home, plays with it for five minutes and then yells at it because it's doing something they don't like and then ignores it. But, it, oh, you can't get rid of it because I love it so much. Yeah. Like yeah. Like and usually I think this happens because the person who doesn't want the dog, like, knows that that's going to be the outcome. It's like they, can, they have foresight and they can see, they know that, like, <laughs> I'm going to have to do all these things. And the person who really wants the dog, like you said, wants the idea of the dog and not the reality of a dog and once yep. the reality is there like they are just they just are like well <laughs> good luck <laughs> good luck yeah or it's kind of like people say oh they'll get a dog for the kids but the no kids problem. aren't going to take care of it it's the parents that are going to take care of it um <clears throat> that but that kind of goes into it sort of like just because they don't have a dog and just because they do have a dog like i gave some scenarios <clears throat> earlier doesn't necessarily mean they're a dog person like they're probably again they inherited the dog from somebody and they're just taking care of it out of for you know family responsibility or obligation or whatever but you know as soon as again as soon as their relatives comes back from their overseas deployment boom and you know but that's where this comes in it's like the, you want somebody who doesn't like them and doesn't want them that's what you want. Um, I, and this is important also, because I don't think it really asked for that. But they do. They, I remember they would say that for kids, because you've got the same thing for kids. You know, do you have kids? You know, do you, would you date somebody with kids? Yes or no, or don't care. Maybe it's like whatever. Uh, although that's a big deal also. But it's also the, another big one is do you want kids, right? Because you can say, okay, if you're only pursuing someone without kids that person might want to have kids in the future so that's something to consider but this is the same kind of thing that you know just because they don't have a dog doesn't mean they're not going to try to get into that space later um yeah 
No, I did experience that when I was dating as I made it very clear on my profile. I do not have kids and I do not want kids and I don't want to date. I want to, I don't, I don't want to date somebody with children. I mean, because that, because I would expect somebody with children to want to spend, because, I mean, I want to hang out. I mean, if I date somebody, I want to spend my free time with them. And if they would rather spend, okay, this is a weird thing. I mean, if they would rather spend more time with me than their kids, then they're a shitty dad and they're a fucking shitty human being. And I don't want to date them, but I also yeah. don't want to date somebody that is spending like all their weekends with their children. They should be spending all weekend with their children with somebody who was who was on board with that, which is not me. I mean, I had guys, right. I did have guys try and plead with me and say, Hey, I know you said you don't like kids, but and I'm like, listen, dude, my lifestyle, I do things that are not kid friendly. I like to go car camping out in the middle of nowhere and backpacking. And that is not a kid friendly thing. So no, I'm sorry. But honestly, I really think, I mean, you know, looking back on it, that attitude, like, I'm sure I can change your mind. I think that that is really, I mean, that's probably even more prevalent in dog owners because dog ownership and dog culture are so entrenched in society. And so people are so brainwashed and accustomed to just having, just assuming that everyone likes dogs. And if you don't like dogs, well, or you don't have a dog, then you'll be a okay with mine. And you should be, you should be right. okay with mine yep. and, and not accepting no for an answer. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think with dog people too, I mean, if somebody with kids is like those kids will, you know, long-term are going to grow up and get on with their lives. You hope. Yes. Um, but like with dogs, it's like, okay, with a dog person, you know, the dog is, you know, in a sense, and I don't want to equate them to human children. It's a whole different thing, but they, you know, the dog is going to be nothing but a useless crap hound until it dies at which point they're going to get another dog or more dogs. So it's just a sort of a never ending, you know, cycle, but yeah, I'm surprised there aren't, you know, filters for this, but like you said, I guess, you know, the assumption is everybody, why would you need to filter on something like this? Like only, you know, the spawn of Hitler and Satan would not want a dog in their life. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, guilty as charged, I guess. Yeah, I guess, yeah. <laughs> I got to uh, drop, guys, but it was great talking to you both. Yeah, it was good having you on. Yeah, interesting topic. Yeah. I guess, yeah. Sonia, maybe you, you and I can stay on for a little longer. I'll probably wrap because we're coming up on two hours, so I'll probably wrap it in about 10 minutes or so. so. Yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah, no, yeah. this is a great conversation. Yep. Yeah, really interesting stuff. Um. Anyway, you have a good one, Sheepy. I'll uh, be seeing you on the Discord. Yes, bye, Sheepy. She already left. Yeah. The um, but yeah, it's interesting. It's like some of you talk about like the gender differences here. I try to manage that very carefully because I don't want. You know, it's kind of like a partisan fights. It's like, you know, even though this issue is political, it's not partisan. And I don't want people to get into a death match over some partisan political difference and also also some gender difference. But Sheepy does make a good point. I can emphasize it, particularly if you're in, say, relationships with kids. <clears throat> you know, the expectations of men and women are different. Right. And she does make they it. Good. Well, first of all, because you've got, first of all, you got the pro pregnancy thing. And yeah, trying to deal with really a bunch of large dogs and you're pregnant. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot harder on women than it is on men. Definitely. And I'm just saying that matter of factly. Um, and also, there's different expectations in terms of, you know, child rearing and keeping the house, even though I guess these days things tend to be a lot more equitable than they were, say, in the 1950s, for example. But still, I mean, you know, I guess both have, you know, there's roles to play and, the, you know, the, the wife's role is to, you know, probably do the majority of the child rearing and the housekeeping. For the most part. So yeah. and you can see, yeah, that's so that was sort of like if you got some dog, some, you know, if you inject a dog into that, it probably would in many cases, 70 percent of the time be harder on the wife than it is the husband. But, you know, with that said, you know, there's there's plenty of crazy dog moms out there. There's no shortage of them. So I don't want 
Yeah, I don't want to think it's it's strictly a, a guy thing because yeah, I, I know for a fact it is not. Yeah, yeah no. but there but there are and you know what's interesting too is is that sort of pursuant to that was and you talk about how dog culture has changed. And I've been meaning to I've been meaning to do this for I don't know 10 years, even back when I was blogging, is do a big write-up or a deep dive into the evolution of modern dog culture, like post-World War II. But what was interesting was, you know, I remember, you know, I was born in the late 60s and grew up in the 70s and 80s. And it, it was, I, I recall, and somebody else in the same age bracket or older might have the same recollection or not, but my recollection was, was that in terms of pet preferences, at the time, say like circa 1980, dogs were more of a guy thing. That's my I recollection. Agree. I um, think so. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know if it's a case now, because like I said, just like, you know, more's change. But I think yeah, historically, the dogs are more like, I, I recall that, and I was always more of a cat person. I never really... I, I didn't, you know, hate dogs growing up. We had dogs and I thought they were annoying and useless, but I didn't hate them or or even dislike them. I didn't want anything bad to happen to them. I just wasn't crazy. I always liked the family cats a lot more, right? Because that was my right. preference. But I recall at the time that was seen, if you were a male, that was seen as being slightly effeminate. Oh, you yeah. Know, was, ownership by men was definitely not something... And also, you know, like l little small, like purse dogs, that was like a gay, like they didn't seem to be associated with either women or like gay men or something like that, little purse yeah. dogs. Um, now I see all sorts of people. I mean, I think now it's just like, well, I have a small dog because it's more practical for my space. And I see dudes that are not like, you know, not, a, you know, they're just your average guy um walking the, you know with those things so i think that's also been transcended too but you're right yep. it was totally it was totally different when i was growing up and when you know in the 80s and stuff like that when we were teenagers yeah yeah the um i mean it's it's, it's interesting the whole evolution of it because back then also it was like if you were a, you know a manly man with your dog you were expected to discipline it Right. Yeah. That was that was something that's like, okay, like, you know, with like my stepdad, for example. Right. It was like. I, I don't know. I don't know if he was exactly the Marlboro man. He was into horses also. But, you know, but he was like he was very, very strict with them, you know, and I, I've talked about them on these you know ch chats before, too. He was like. You know, if we were in the kitchen eating dinner, you know, they they would and it goes out dumb. He had well, I guess they were our dogs at the time. There's a Gordon Setter and a Yellow Lab. And then, like I said, they were both like stupid and useless, but I didn't hate them or anything. And I but I used to remark often just on how like impossibly dumb they were. Cause you know, like his thing was it was like no, no people food, no feet. And he wouldn't even allow the dogs in the kitchen. Because we had a home, we had a kitchen, you know, with an eating area. We also had a like a formal dining room. And the dogs were not allowed in those spaces, at least not when food was being prepared or consumed, right? So the dogs could sack out in the kitchen if nobody was eating or preparing food. But if somebody did, he would kick, he'd order them go, you know, he'd order them out. But they would keep coming in to beg. So they would come to the kitchen, they would start begging, and he'd, you know, snap and point, like, go, get out of here, go. And they'd slink off. But then five minutes later, they just they'd come back and start begging again. You know? Of course they would. But it was but at least you could give them, you know, an A for effort. Same thing. It's like, you know, they would jump up on house guests. Right. So yeah. somebody would come through the door. They'd both run up and start jumping up in that purse. They'd yell down, down, you know, and boom, they, they would hit the floor th off. Right. But then five the five minutes later, the next person who came in, they just jump up on that person, you know, and then down. You know? And it was just, they're so they, smart. Yeah, they're so intelligent. It's like this zero retention. Yeah. But basically, because I don't think he didn't hurt, he wasn't like physically, he didn't like hit them or anything. No, it was just throw them down or knock them down, and they they still don't learn. 
Yeah, but that was the thing was, yeah, you know, the whole gender difference is like back then, yeah, 40 years ago, dogs were more of a guy thing. But if you're a dog person, you're expected to discipline them, right? Like dogs biting people was, you know, dangerous dogs. There's very, very low tolerance for that back then. Yeah. Endless bark. I don't even remember last of like all the endless barking. Again, there was you never saw a dog in a restaurant or a grocery store. Well, well that did start. Ne- no. That never happened. Like, no. um, but yeah, the whole gender differences thing here is. But I think a lot of that that's not the case anymore. It's like I see. I, you know, I've got, you know, female neighbors with pit bulls and stuff. It's, it's, it's just, it's, it's a ubiquitous now. Um, so. There's a weird archetype of, of, of people, of women who own pit bulls. I mean, it's just like, it's like a subtype of, of, um, of like, you know, you've got like dog owners and dog nutters, and then you've got like these tiers of dog, you know, dog people. And I think the the pit people, the pit nutters, are like their own separate category because again, even the other dog owners hate hate pit bulls. A lot of them hate pit bulls and don't like pit owners and stuff like that. And those people are, you know, again, more I think more associated with antisocial and social deviant type of behavior based on the, those articles of studies that have actually been done on the subject and everything. And they're aggressive and. The pit moms, the pit mommies, I mean, we've got some of those in my subdivision. And this is not, this is a, a middle class, you know, subdivision. It's nice. It's like people are not, there's no homeless people here. It's outside of town and stuff like that. And it's nice. But we got the pit mommies here. I mean, you know, um, I don't know if they're obsessive pit moms, but they're the people, they're women and they own pit bulls. And they take them running or walking with them and stuff like that. But, you know, I think you're right. And also, I mean, what Sheepy was saying about the moms, especially all getting all that emotional and physical labor dumped on them with the stupid dogs, because, you know, um, once the, once either the child is born or, or the, 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 the dad decides, oh, well, let's have a dog now on top of, you know, because I'm not having to do the work of the, of taking care of the child, but I need, you know, maybe now we don't spend as much time together because of this baby. So I need a dog. And then, and then says, you know, she says, nope. We got it. You got, if you're going to get a dog, these are the criteria. These are the, you know, you've got to take care of it. You got to do hundred percent of the work. And inevitably what happens is he maybe starts out that way, but then slides on it. And the woman, here's the thing. The woman ends up getting taken care of it because she doesn't want to see piles of dog shit on the fucking carpet in the house. Right. Right. You got standards, you know, you can't, you can't live like that. Yeah, You can't live like that. So she ends up taking care of solving the problem because and it's just like, and he's just like, oh, well, he just not going to complain. But in single people, or I should say not single people, but two dog free people, like say a young couple, like some millennials or young or like um, Gen Z's or something like that, that are dating and they're both, maybe they're both child free by choice. They, so they decide we don't want kids. Okay. So, but still somebody, I think that there's an equal distribution of, of what I see on, like on, on the, the, you know, the, um, the doghouse, the, the tales from the doghouse. It seems to be almost a 50, 50 distribution of, 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 of women and men that say, "Well, you know what? You don't like my dog, then you can hit the road because, or if you make me get rid of the dog, I will resent you." So there's this passive aggressive sort of attitude and behavior, and yeah. we're not keeping. You know, it's sort of like, well, my feelings about this dog that I don't really that I say I love but don't really give a shit about. You know, it's like my actions are not speaking are not in. You know. Um, pairing with my my words, um, it seems to be about equal in terms of you know the load getting dumped off and the other partner, like you said, getting getting having um, either either getting the guilt trip or the cold shoulder or the threats of you know well if you if you make me get rid of the dog I'll resent you forever or if you don't <laughs> you know if you don't like the I'll dog then you. tough shit you need to hit the road. Yeah, I, I think too is it, it. What makes this such a profound issue, though, is that the dogs themselves. I mean, you know, they're they're grossly offensive animals, and dogs as a hobby are almost always impose on others. We're talking about you know hobbies, like let's say 
you meet somebody and they're a, a model railroading enthusiast, right? So they're going to invest time and money in that. Maybe a room of the house will be dedicated to it. But it's not really intrusive. Like, it's not going to maul you to death. It's not going to crap all over the house. It's not going to noise pollute unless maybe they're running it all night. Right? It's not. It's a kind of an unobtrusive hobby. You know, if you care about somebody, you should respect those interests. And I think the dog people are trying to appeal to that. But, you know, yeah, having a couple of Rottweilers is a whole different ball game than having, you know, a, a, a model train set or oh collecting God. stamps, right? It's not even, yeah, it's not even comparable. And you're absolutely yeah. right. It's like, and the fact that somebody says, you know, tries to, like, I, I just, I'm, I'm like, just really blown away that somebody would put a dog's, a, their, their, their obsession or like, or whatever of a dog over their partner and say, this is, we're, I'm, this is a hill I'm willing to die on is my dog. Yeah. <laughs> over their partner, including their spouse, which is really pretty sick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just, I mean, I just, all I, all I, every time I see those, those posts, I just think to myself, thank God I'm not single. And, you know, my husband, like I told you, I mean, he likes dogs. And he, he's even said, if I, you know, if you and I weren't together, I'd probably get a dog. He knows a dog's non starter. And you know what? We are, we are, we are on the same page in terms of pets because we've had cats. It didn't work out. And, there, and usually it was me actually saying, listen, these cats, this cat that we got is not working out. I don't like her um, and or whatever. And or this cat, because he's doing he's just behaviors won't stay off the countertops or something like that. And for me personally, that's that's unacceptable. I mean, other people are like more tolerant of that. I, I just find it disgusting and I don't I won't put up with it. And so I would not gonna, I'm not going to keep a pet, any pet that is not making that is not enhancing my life. But yet, right. you know, read over and over and over again about these dogs just sucking everybody's soul dry. You know, they drain <laughs> everybody's like mental health and they cause stress. And these people are like, I cry, I'm miserable all the time. And my partner just doesn't care because he or she loves the dog so much and it's their baby and yet does nothing to take care of it. And I, I was like, why do you want something like that? And why yeah. are you just, you know, I, I, I think it's, it's just like, I think, well, it's a, I guess it's past. There's some kind of really sick pathology there because, yeah, the dog, <laughs> unlike other interests or even other pets, it's like, yeah, I know, like some people don't like cats, but cats don't ruin people's lives. Like, no. or they like almost never happens. Like, yeah, I'm not saying they're perfect or anything, but. You know, a lot of those, it's not like, oh, yeah, like I can't sleep in the house because of my parents' cat. Right. Or it's like, or, you know, if I leave my bedroom door open, the cat will like rip tear my mattress. To Cats can be destructive too, but much way less so than dogs are. I mean, a dogs will literally, they'll just, they will literally destroy the inside of a house in a relatively short period of time, you know, and the noise polluting. Yes, all of it. And, you know, yeah, it's like, they're just, yeah, right, yeah, you see, that they're just, they're just making everybody, literally ruining the lives of all the other family members, and like, oh, but I love Rover so much, you know, my life's not complete without him, it's like, holy crap, you oh, know, God. but okay. so much, you realize if, you rep if any other hobby were doing that, you know, see, the whole thing would be handled completely differently, or it would be viewed, it. it would be because it parts another doggy double standard. Yeah, you know? that's just it. When when you apply the standard to any other animal, other behavior, other hobby, other type of situation, and you see how it is not, not applied the same to dogs, that's when even a rational person who, who owns and likes dogs would be able to say, wait a minute, you're right here. I mean, but these dog nutters that come on and troll you know, troll the very troll various channels that we're on and stuff like that. I mean, they don't even see that. They can't even see that. I mean, these people are not even capable. They're so mired down in their own, you know, uh, confirmation bias and cognitive dissonance about the thus issue with the dogs that they are they're so entrenched in it, they can't even see the other side. They're incapable of of seeing anybody else's point of view or even grokking the fact that somebody might have a point. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> uh, 
Yeah, indeed. <laughs> Hey, look, we're out, we're past two hours. I think I'm going to wrap it up. It's a great conversation. Thanks for joining. Yeah, uh, hey, it's good to have it. It was fun. Yeah, see if I can get more of these on here because it's always good. I know one thing before we wrap up. I know we were talking about because you have a medical background and go through. I think I, mean, I don't know if you brought it up or if I did, but maybe going through all these service dog applications and. Yes. Doing a debunk on them. It probably is going to require quite a bit of due diligence. We'd have to really get, we can collaborate in the background, get all the ducks in a row prior. Oh, um, yeah. No, uh, this is the kind of research I'm like into doing. I love doing this shit just on my own free time because, I mean, half the time I'm doing it just to post on these, to, you know, these counter arguments to these trolls and stuff like that. No, that is, I'll tell you what, doing research on this stuff is great because I always learn more things. And I'm all about learning and updating, you know, my information and my priors and stuff like that. Cause there's a lot of times I think I know something and I read a thing, you know, I read some, something about it. And I go, oh, wow, is it wrong about that? And it's, it's really good. And just what I would do this time, instead of just doing it informally is just write down, let's like really take notes and actually write down a whole comprehensive list of every sort of quote unquote disability I can find where a service dog has been used and then find other treatments or um, therapies or modalities or whatever, uh, you know, technologies yeah. that, that are used more effectively to treat it. Yeah. And I think the thing too, is you to debunk the notion of service dogs as medical equipment because they don't, yeah. they, you know, they don't meet the standards for med. They don't meet the standards yeah. for any consumer product. They do not. I mean, if anything else failed at the rate they do, boom gone that's what's really amazing that they've been allowed to be so pervasive in society and so just blindly accepted by the ada without any sort of critical um you know uh, peer examination peer review anything like that to just actually compare it like well somebody says well this dog it's very subjective it's all just oh, oh well I, this, you know, I have this thing, this condition, like this, this vague condition and this dog is, is helping me from the blah, blah, blah. I, this, I, I'm not, I'm not seeing it. Not only that, even if it was helping, it's like, you know, people will say, oh, this dog saved my life. I'm like, did the, did, when you had a seizure, did the, was it the dog that called 911 or was it maybe a person that was in the, the store yeah. that called 911? Well, that's the thing is, yeah, it's not going to do anything for him, you know, no. it's, no. And, you know, they, and they refuse to acknowledge that they always assign all of the credit to the dog for any positive thing that happened and never any credit to other people, uh, you know, a good Samaritan or an employee or their spouse or anybody else who interv who actually did the inter, you know, the actually, yeah, did the heavy lift. Well, that was, I, I introduced a concept a while back. It's called complementary mutt theory. And it's sort of the reverse of a critical theory. That what that means is, is that you, in any situation or any good outcome involving a dog, is you always attribute credit to the dog. Yes. Right? So you always give the dog always gets, Rover always gets a participation award. We were, like, skewering that. I think it was, well, as last year sometime. And it was um, a woman in the, I think it was in the UK. She took, it was a, I think it was a pit bull or similar. And she was delivering a baby, right? And she's like, and the dog, I guess, was her emotional support oh, animal God. or whatever. But everybody's going over. It's like, oh, yeah, Fido helped deliver the baby. I'm like, no, he didn't. Probably at best, it was just taking up space. It didn't do, I mean, she might have been comforted by having it there, perhaps, but it didn't do, but they're making it sound like it's complimentary mutt theory. Like, yeah, it would have been like a, you know, a stillbirth if the dog hadn't been there. <laughs> You know, we were joking about that. We're saying, it was like, wait, you know, let's say somebody comes in, like, wait, no, don't push. Like, Rover's not here yet. You know, it's like, oh my God. I mean, that's what it was. Yeah, it's complimentary mutt theory. So they, you know, they, they always give like, you know, a tribute as much credit to the dog as possible. And oh, they got to go through ridiculous contortions to, to, to get there. Right. Whereas the opposite, because if, if there's a bad outcome involving the dog, well, that's always attributed to something else, right? It's, it's human. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's a victim's fault or somebody sneezed or, or they just write it off as a 
tragic accident, right? That's interesting too, like with a dog bite. We need to talk more about like dog bite statistics, but it seems like a lot of these non pit bull dog killings have much more passive aggressive language in them. Which makes me think that a lot of the statistics we have, well, I know the statistics we have are not very good because there's no uniform reporting requirement, but there was a, you know, a Husky deleted a baby a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and right. how is it written yeah. up? It's like, well, infant dies in accident involving family dog. But I think that's it's very passive language. It's like, what was the nature of that accident? It's like, I know they, they both went down with a Titanic. There was a tragedy, you know. <laughs> and they're so desperate to not to have the, to know, because these people, the thing is, despite what they, you know, they, they say about dogs, you know, not being problematic, they all know, they know, actually, it, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's very disingenuous for them to say they don't know that dogs are causing these problems. They know damn well that these dogs are causing problems. But anytime a situation like this happens, they can't, they just, you know, that they're just groaning and rolling their eyes and going, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Every time. Like, damn. Yeah. How do we write you know what? this you up? Can't, <laughs> you can't sugarcoat this shit for much longer. I mean, people, you can only, you know, you can only bullshit people for so long. I mean, people are not stupid and they'll be like, wait a minute. You know, this keeps happening. I, every day I read a case or I hear cases about dog related, you know, fatalities and stuff like that. And it's like, you can't keep bullshitting people before they say you know what we're done with this we need to have some rules and that's when the change happens and that's when you finally get one of these you know like we're talking about lawmakers that get have a you know a set of a set of oh a set of well we need like we need uniform to. reporting requirement the problem though too is it goes into you know the corruption of the mutt matrix like we need standardized reporting requirements for this stuff but i think even if we had that there's still going to be some cheating because like with dogs bite, you know, Colleen and I are well associated, well, um, you know, well acquainted. She was actually on one of these calls late yeah. last year. And uh, that was a really good call. Where she said, yeah, there's really no standardized reporting requirements for this stuff. So she goes primarily off of news reports. But that's, you know, assuming that this stuff is reported anywhere at all. And that's come up because she was saying pretty recently, like she's the body count for 2022 is still racking up because what happens is, you know, she'll be contacted. Somebody will call her, write her and say, you know what? I, you know, I have an acquaintance or a friend of a friend that was killed by a dog, you know, died as a result of a dog attack. And I don't see it reported anywhere. Not on your site. It wasn't in, in the paper. Nothing, you know, I Googled their name. Nothing came up. It's like they just, boom, cease to exist. So she'll put out, Colleen, well, she'll issue FOIA requests. Say, okay, where was this? To, you know, relevant authorities, police department, coroner's office, and so forth. And yeah, it comes back. That person, you know, his attack, you know, was died as a result of a dog attack. But it just got, it wasn't reported on any news item. It just got, you know, put in a folder, stuck in a filing cabinet, and that was the end of that. And you got to wonder how much of that stuff is out there. Or if it is reported, they use such passive aggressive language that it doesn't trigger any like search criteria, you know? So. Yeah, exactly. Because again, you know, like we said, there's a, there's an, uh, there's a strong motive by the dog culture, the dog culture industrial complex to keep that stuff quiet because anytime, anytime that sort of stuff comes up, it makes more and more people question owning these dogs. And of course that's not what, you know, all the, um, the, the marketing companies of Purina and Nestle and all the other, all the other industries that are reliant on dog ownership, that's not what they want. It's completely, a, you know, and it's its contradictory to what they want. So they're going to do anything they can to try and quiet it down. Well, and it, it's that's counter correct. to, it's its it politically incorrect. Yeah. Also. And think about what happened, think about how it was like with smoking. It's the same thing, you know. I mean, dog dog ownership, it, you know, I mean, Kanan said this and it's true. It needs to become the new smoking yep. dog ownership does. It needs to be publicly publicly shunned 
And, you know, it's, you know, smoking used to be seen as glamorous. I mean, all the GIs did it, you know, in the wars and stuff, you saw him smoking. Now people smoking is like, those people are social pariahs, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what, we need to turn dog owners, you know, people who bring their dogs into public, not dog owners, if people want to own dogs and keep them on their own property and keep them on, you know, keep them on, uh, you know, in dog parks, don't give a shit about that. But pariahs, when they try to drag their dog into any public space, especially a retail space, an indoor space where humans like food, they need to be shamed and turned into pariahs. That's the only way anything's going to change, in my opinion. That and laws. Enforcement of laws. Yep, enforcement of laws. You got to, um, but that that's very challenging. I don't mean to, to like black pill anybody. You know, you and I are actually discussing this the other day. It's not, but you know what? Like the journey of a thousand miles starts with a first step. And, you know, I, I, you got to kind of think about it strategically. It's like rolling this thing up is not something that's going to just happen. It's going to take, no. you know, the app, it's like fighting a major war. It's like somebody's not just going to step in and destroy the enemy. It's going to have to be the collective effort of a lot of people. Absolutely. To roll this thing up. Yep. And consistency, consistently like hammering away at it. And people, it happens as, you know, it happens gradually. It happens as more and more people get, you know, em- empowered by seeing channels like yours and K-Nuns and reading articles about, you know, on like Slate magazine or other places and seeing dog critical, finally seeing dog critical articles and going, wait a minute. I'm allowed to not like dogs. It's okay if I am critical of dogs. And, you know, I'm so sick and tired of being bullied by dog people who tell me I'm like, that's, you know, the spawn of Hitler because I hate dogs, you know, yeah. and they don't want to admit it. And then all of a sudden they're like, you know what? Fuck that shit. Yeah. I'm going to fly my, my dog, my anti-dog flag. And I mean, I'm at that point now. I'm like, I just have a, not a single flying tiny little fuck to give about what anybody thinks about me not liking dogs if you want to sit there and tell me i'm a i'm a the spawn of hitler for not liking dogs fuck you Still (laughs) that's the other thing too is but you know what it is is that they i mean dog people the thing is they label anybody like if you don't love every dog in creation and excuse all dog behavior you're a hater which is really kind of an absurd proposition because somebody could actually like dogs and still say okay maybe dog owners need to be held accountable right like when i first got into this space i was probably like a you know a level 1 hater meaning i wasn't i didn't really have much animosity towards the animals themselves are even the owners, but I just said, look, you know, we got a problem here because, do- you know, dogs and dog owners get a pass on everything that needs to stop. Let's just, you know, impose equal protection rules and just treat them like everybody else. But then that's it. You, you're a hater. You're, you, you're boiling over with rage. And like, what, where's the hatred? Like what, well, you know, it, it's my, my premise is it's totally you know it's small d democratic there's nothing wrong with it like where's the hatred but that's their narrative i always say you can hate them too and over the years i've kind of evolved maybe now i'm like a level three hater but (laughs) yeah yeah exactly you've evolved some but a lot of that's due i mean that's really that's their narrative you know they want that's that's and it shows like how nuts they are, because anybody yes. who like you say, OK, I could come. You know what? Owners of dogs that maul and kill belong in prison like you're a hate you. That's hateful. That's evil. That's horrible. But they'd be fine. Say, OK, replace that with actually any other animal. If your pet that's rhinoceros it. kills somebody like, okay. oh, yeah, you should send that person to jail. But not if it's a dog. Never if it's a dog. Right. It's all good. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, and I'm so done with those people. I just tune them out. I'm like, you know what? You just made my argument for me about why y'all are a bunch of, um, you know, a bunch of freak shows that are best avoided and why you are the ones who are antisocial misanthropes, not me. I'm not yeah. the one going around telling people, geez, you know, I, uh, you know, the, the, the baby got mauled and it's the baby's fault and, you know, good for the dog for killing the baby. I mean, all this weird, like really twisted stuff that people say. Yeah. Stuff or just as a dog, you know, a baby dies, and the, the, the first thing out of these people's mouths is, Oh, what about the poor dog? What the fuck is wrong with you? 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. Was a dog okay? Like, you know, I mean, you know, eating, oh, eating too many toddlers can raise Rover's uh, cholesterol. You know, you don't want that to happen. Actually, you know, if you present it that way, then because that's the thing is the only really way to get traction with these people. And what's it was not even then. I mean, is to say, well, maybe it's bad for the dog. But what's interesting, and it goes to the point of really they they the dog is really more an object of worship. Like this really doesn't have much to do with love of animals. No. You know, it's all about, you know, cult ideology and fitting in and virtue signaling, virtue signaling and all that kind of stuff, you know, because I think, too, as you can see, I mean, there's definitely there should be common ground because there's definitely animal welfare issues here. And I don't know if you saw it, but it was one of my monologues, one of my early ones where I featured not the current neighbors, but the ex neighbors dog across the street. And that was from a long time ago. That's that video was taken early last decade. It was right around the time I became woke on this issue. But and I would present that at a time when I was blogging about it and I was in other forums. And I would, you know, because I would be labeled a hater. I'd say, you know what? Like, let's I think dog own, you know, if people are gonna have dogs or any pets, they need to be kept in a humane and socially responsible way. I think it's a, it's a very the perfectly, I would think, reasonable position to take. Right? How could anybody argue with that? How could anybody argue with that? But they do. Like, oh, you're hateful. You, you, you oh, hate. Yeah. You hate. But then yeah. I would point out because I would, I would show that I would share that video. It's like, okay, dog lovers, you tell me if that's a good way to keep a dog or not. Watch that video. Right? The dog. I was filming it because I was actually getting evidence because I was building evidence for a lawsuit and the dog almost literally almost got struck by lightning they had it tied up in the yard during one of these violent thunderstorms it's like is that is that a, like a humane way to keep a dog or not I, I used to scold them too it's like you dog lovers you should be ashamed of yourself Yep. You claim to love these things, but yet when I point at it and I say that's not right, I'm a, the bad person. They're like, yeah, you mow on, you deranged, you do. De that's because that's all I've been hearing for 10 years. You delusional. It's like, yeah, I'm delusional. <laughs> you know? I know. It, you can't even take these people seriously. I'm just like, you have just, you have like completely dismantled your own argument because you've contradicted yourself. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. Hey, look, I really got, I got a jet. So uh, I think I'm going to wrap it up. Yeah, so, me thanks too. For joining. <laughs> we'll do another one soon. Um, I'll be talking to you on the discord. So yeah, this is good. animal uncontrolled. And as always, people first. Catch you later.